It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Alex Lindsay has the week off, but don't worry. Renee and Andy have lots to say. We're going to talk about the epic battle between Epic and Apple and many of the things now revealed. Huge success for the app tracking features in iOS 14.5. But are you getting the full story? And uh, then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the perfect hack on the AirTags. Just enough to make it small enough for your wallet. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 765. Recorded Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. Black Rod for a day. This episode of Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Untuck It. Summer is right around the corner, and now is the perfect time to try out an Untuck It shirt that's just right for you. Use the code TWIT for 20% off your first purchase at untuckit.com. And by Manscaped, the best in men's below the belt grooming. Smooth it out, fellas, with Manscaped. Get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com slash twit. And by Casper. When it comes to a better night's sleep, Casper's new cooling collection has you covered. Focus on tomorrow. Let Casper handle the rest. Explore Casper products, mattresses, sheets, pillows, and more at casper.com slash MacBreak and use the code MacBreak for $100 off select mattresses. Offer excludes the snow mattresses. See casper.com for details. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Apple. Uh, we're giving Alex Lindsay the week off to do actually work. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> Renee Ritchie is here. YouTube.com slash Renee Ritchie. Hi, Renee. Hello. Hi, Leo. It's, he's not even on office hours, are we sure? Has anyone done a, a, a quality of life check on Alex this week? Wow. Can't find him online. It's so weird. Oh, my goodness. He's been online he, for a year. He's, he's actually working. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Mm. And early. Nice. Nice. Maybe the world is starting to open again. Nice. It's a good sign. Yes, <laughs> it is. Also, uh, Andy Nako from uh, WGBH Boston. Hello, Andrew. Hello. Now, I don't I, I don't want to spoil anything that Alex is not supposed to talk about. I do notice that this morning was uh, the, the Queen's speech. Oh. So maybe he's like at oh. Westminster and he's, he's got a microphone on Black Rod. You know, remember the last time the Queen did the COVID talk, she was wearing a green dress, and uh, I think perhaps <laughs> they did, in fact, call Alex in to... Uh, so this time she's wearing a white dress, it looks like. I, I thought it was interesting that even for, like, she this very, very official sort of thing, she still, like, carries her purse all the way to the House of Lords. Oh, yeah. yes. She's got it next to her on the throne. She's kind of famous for that. Yeah. Like, well, we don't know what's in that. That could be some nuclear codes or something in there. We don't know. A, a, com a compact and a handkerchief, serious. I believe. Yes. And then, and what? And then, of course, I wonder if she ever says to Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, uh, "Boris, could you brush your hair for me, darling?" <laughs> you look, shut up, please. You look like you just woke up. <laughs> I just hope that we never get the red speech. Like I've so much Game of Thrones anxiety about monarchs getting up <laughs> to talk to people. Oh yeah, just, no kidding. We don't need we don't need her to say, "All right, half of you are gone," and then snap her royal fingers. Oh, wouldn't that be funny? Yeah, she's tough. She, you, you know that they deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, there she is. There's the dress. That's actually more of a gray, isn't it? Yeah. Can you key? You could key that out. Well, no, that that maybe Alex uh, chose that dress because that way he could white balance and uh, color balance off of that neutral gray. <laughs> it's the, the chair, really. They're used to people in big fur cloaks sitting on. They're not used to petite people yeah, in look, pantsuits. Look at the chair. That's wild. That is, that's straight out of Valheim. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Her great 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 grandfather was a nine foot Viking, and now she's sitting in his chair. She just looks like a hobbit. Doesn't quite work. A royal hobbit. You're in the Commonwealth, sir. You should not be mocking your queen. So the Queen of Canada is a separate legal entity from the Queen. It is like she has 25 separate legal entities or something. And our royal family is slightly different because we count a few Canadian cousins. They do not. And they count a few British cousins. We do not. So we are a distinct uh, monarchy. So, so they're not all German is the point you're making. <laughs> yeah, we have some that drink of the maple. Of the maple, uh, the maple got it. Maple syrup. tree. The maple tree. 96%, uh, according to Flurry, 96% of iOS 14.5 <laughs> users have opted out of app tracking. It's exactly uh. as Facebook feared. <laughs> you, you all don't want to be tracked. Yep. 
That's probably double what most people expected, however. It's a uh, lot. I mean, f f so a, it just shows, given the choice, uh, when you get a new app on there, as you probably know, if you have 14.5, it says, would you like to allow AppX to track your activity across other companies' apps and websites? And then there can be another screen at that point that you the, the company could put up saying, hey, here's why you want to allow tracking. Oh, they should have put, we know who you're messaging. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then we just blackmail us all into doing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Clearly people see that and just go, uh, no, please ask the app not to track. Yeah. yeah. That, that's the difference between a system level, uh, system level alert with a language that has been standardized by Apple and simply having a requirement, hey, you have to put up something that asks for permission for this. When it's a standardized thing with no uh, written by people who have no uh, dog in this hunt, say, hey, we just want to let you know that this is a feature that lets you turn on or off tracking. Here is one sentence in which that was provided by the developer to d develop their to give their side of the story. That's when people say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fooled by other descriptions. This one says, you know what, I'm going to take the time to click on the deny button. I don't care if there are features that are going that I'm going to miss out on. Uh, my fear was that this would be just one, another one of those things that you see, but then you just blow right past because it's you you, you want to see pictures of your cousin's new cat and this is stopping you from seeing pictures of your cousin's new cat it's uh yeah i mean yeah you would think that people would just go okay but it's not an okay or cancel it's a ask right. app not to track or allow and i think that that might have something it's to do with it apple writing it out. you know here's the example apple gives uh allow pal about to track your activity across other companies apps and websites and then pal about provides the in in smaller much smaller print your data will be used to deliver personalized ads to you uh which is the excuse um, I, some people complained about this and said that they should be able to tailor it specifically to their use case. But to me, that's like a red flag. It's like if a contact app said, we're going to help you find your friends, that's not informing you of the potential that they're also sucking all your contacts to, to the cloud, which a lot of them have done. So I always think you've got to tell people the full pos like the, the full scope of what that entitlement and permission allows so they can make an informed uh, decision. You can't just tell them like the best case scenario if, if nobody ever abuses the full scope of that privilege. I've, all right, I'm going to be... This is probably not a popular opinion here, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, of course, when you put it that way, allow PayPal to track to track your activity across other companies' apps and websites. People would say, "Yeah, I don't want that." But isn't it a little slanted? I mean, um, uh, I mean, doesn't I guess there's really no you can't. There's no justification. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like it, maybe if people had more information about it they would not necessarily be clicking 96% of the time to, to, to disallow. Yeah. Or the offer was I, better. Like if they offered yeah. you five bucks for every website you went to, right. then yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, just, I don't know if people are full, if that's informed consent, I guess is what I'm saying. Is it? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to be completely informed. For instance, um, Google and all and a lot of its privacy disclosures that they have to make, what they have to provide, or excuse me, what they choose to provide is kind of scary because uh, for now they are, being, they're playing it safe with Apple by saying, well, by virtue of the uh, uh, Google Photos does not necessarily take all of this data and, did, and does anything with it, but you have to be logged into your Google account to use Google Photos. And by virtue of that being logged into your Google account means that this sort of stuff can be disclosed. So there's going to be some more granularity maybe that uh, once we once the developers figure out here's what apple is going to punish here's what apple is not going to punish um i would love to i would love it if it, if the system became detailed enough that uh, users would feel comfortable simply saying, "Well, no, of course I don't want to be tracked. This is not a this is not a follow me around and give me directions app, so I don't want to be tracked." But every time that the app can't do something because of what that how that's been set, it can say again a stand, some sort of a standardized alert saying this uh, this app uh, can't this app was not able to pull up your the the coupons that you saved at this vendor because it was unable to maintain your identity in this store. If you don't want that, here's how to fix that, or here's how to go or, back on that. Well, or what if you know, I mean, in some cases, it's look, we're a free service, and the tracking we use is so advertisers will buy ads <clears throat> to support this service. If we don't do this, we we won't survive. Might be a <laughs> well, they've done that. Instagram did that to me. I went to Instagram yeah. and it said <clears throat> like you have to allow this for Instagram to stay free. But my my what I, mean, I would have done is that if inaccurate? I was them. Do you think for Instagram to say that is that uh, hyperbole or is that fair? Well, no, I, but so. 
I, I, th I think smarter would have been for them to stop tracking momentarily and serve you the absolute worst most like remnant ads possible. <laughs> the ones that you get that you know that you've exhausted the supply on any web page, like the ones that look like pimples and like all the worst ads. And then, <laughs> then turn the tracking on so you get the pop up and say, look, Apple's forcing us to give you like the lowest common denominator <laughs> ads. If you'd like much better ads, just hit this button. I, we'll give you the I best ads. I don't know if that's the actually universe. though the consequence. I think I have been told by people that advertisers just won't buy ads on that platform if they don't have information yeah. about who those ads are hitting. They still have it. It's just the conjoining of that information with the specificity of the web. Like Facebook still has near perfect knowledge of everybody using their system. They were they were doing things like buying the credit cards and making side deals on their websites to get specific uh, knowledge for those domains. But I like I like well, Google's that's the still other smiling side. That's you don't, the they other don't need side. this stuff. That's the other side of it is that maybe Apple's giving you false hope. That if you block it, you think, oh, good, I'm not tracked anymore. And absolutely, you're tracked. You're right. You make an excellent Yeah, point. they own the biggest properties on the web. Like they're tracking us through yeah. YouTube and Gmail and Google search and through Instagram and Messenger and Facebook. So this and might not they, be so They different. have near perfect knowledge this of us. This might not be so different than the cookie announcement you see on every website you visit now. It might be, make the it, only might be a feel-good button. Yeah, well, the only difference, the huge difference Google has is they own Chrome and they can do whatever they want in Chrome and nobody can stop well, it. Well, Google like has a lot of first-party information because if you use Google to yeah. search, they know every search you made and it doesn't... They well, don't and if you use Google's you. browser, they know everything you do yeah, in that browser, but like, doesn't, yeah. like, regardless. And, and same with Facebook. Facebook, you're giving Facebook... No. It's funny because a Maybe lot of the people so who are saying though. don't allow are probably giving Facebook every bit of information that yeah. Facebook ever wanted. Well, uh, one gap in people's privacy information is knowing that, oh, well, I don't, I don't even have a Facebook account so I'm safe that well but you're visiting lots and lots of sites that have Facebook trackers on them so that you're all even if uh, so you're vulnerable to their ad network uh, in other ways uh, one of the most famous things that people the, the way I, I'm learning not to scare people when I talk to them about this but people say oh well the, the microphone on my mic the, the Facebook or this app network must be listening in through my microphone because I had a private conversation yeah. with a friend of mine yesterday about this thing and I, I got an ad for it the next day and they don't realize that well, probably because probably because either a like maybe you googled for that afterwards, or even just the fact that it knew that you were in the room with somebody who's a kombucha tea fanatic, and that they probably being being a kombucha tea fanatic probably talked to you with your ear off about it for twenty five minutes, and that maybe now you're interested in more ads about uh, kombucha tea. So it's you're you're, you're right uh, in that you can desensitize people to thinking, oh, all I have to do is flip the switch, or all I have to do is install this ad blocker, and I'm safe from tracking. However, it's a simple thing. This is going to be the thing where we take small steps to get to the destination. And every if there is something that a, a manufacturer like Apple can do to increase the security and increase the privacy on their device, why why not do it? It's not complicated. Why not just do it? Well, I can give you a couple of reasons. One, because it doesn't do anything, and two, because it actually might do something. On <laughs> some some people may lose the ability to monetize. I mean, I'm I'm constantly yeah. told. We aren't going to buy ads unless we can track. I mean, I, I hear that. Right. And the more advertisers get that information, the more they're going to demand that information, I'm afraid. So it might have be, it might simultaneously be the worst of both worlds, that you think you're, you're stopping Facebook and Google from tracking you, and you're not. And you're demonetizing maybe uh, Reddit or a site that you like that can't advertise without that information. But there, is that, that request possible? is also a bit ridiculous because like they don't need to track, like, and I know the kind of sponsors you're talking about and they don't need to track. What they need to do is share conversion data with us. And I then, understand like, then that. Then they can see how effective. I understand the, that, Renee, the, but you, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> go ahead, try talking to those advertisers and agencies <laughs> and say, hey, you don't yeah. need to do this. And they say, well, we do and we're going to. Yeah. And if you don't do it, we're not going to buy ads. And that's, that's that. It. The conversation's over. That, you can't persuade them. <laughs> well, if they that, want the value, that's a very valuable what they need. perspective. Like, yeah. Well, I'm just telling and you. I'll, I'll, all I'm saying is that we've we've we're now in a situation where these ad networks are completely unregulated, com almost completely unrestricted, and that's not working out well for consumers. So it's appropriate at this time for there to be some sort of a pushback so that the ad, the ad industry can either A, determine that, hey, actually, you know what, we can work within this framework. They, they wouldn't be, they, they're, they've they never been encouraged to work within this sort of privacy framework because they never had to. Step, step one after this is not the collapse of Reddit, the collapse of uh, sponsored content. It really is, let's see how this, this industry can react to no longer having that kind of unrestricted access. And 
But then if there are problems that are unsolved, then we can go and, ag and address them. But like I said, there have been so few advocates right now for user privacy that oh, it's quite we the opposite. really definitely need to take Quite the opposite. It's swung completely the other way, Andy. And this 96% okay. proves it. That everybody says, I don't want tracking without cons without thinking about what the consequences will be. And by the way, Facebook, Google, and Renee, YouTube... They don't. They're all first part, first person ads. Yeah, that's what they're I was all getting say. all it's the information they want. Right? Those big platforms are going to survive. It doesn't matter what Apple does. It's the little and guys, that's why they're it's the blogs, it's iMore, it's people like that. They're going to struggle. And podcasts. Well, that's why they're platforming. It's why it's why like Apple wants you in the Apple Podcast app. Yeah, it's exactly. Why, it's, it's why it's so stupefying to me it that puts Facebook me is as so an independent podcaster on the outs because I have to Absolutely. join with Spotify, iHeart, or Apple. Or screw me, I'm not going to get the ad buys. But if you look at the moves in technology, like Google, very quickly, they made their own browser. They made their own podcaster. They're making all of the infrastructure so that they have total control over yeah, it. so it's all first-person ads. Yeah. Facebook isn't, though, it's so interesting to me that Facebook isn't. Like, they failed three times at making a phone. Now, like, Amazon made the Silk browser. Facebook, had, none of their browser projects were ever released. Their Maps project was never released. They, they oh, basically eschewed first-party ownership. Don't kill, kid yourself, Renee. Facebook gets all the information they want. A advertisers are very happy advertising on Facebook. It's very efficient. This will not hurt them. It's, it's But they a, don't have the platform control unless you're on one of their web properties. Like, they still have to deal with Apple. They still have to deal with Google. They still have to deal with the other companies. Yeah, when we they were worried. Over the whole thing. We were worried that Facebook would not survive mobile. Remember, they had no mobile strategy yeah. at all. <laughs> And I guess we were wrong because <laughs> Facebook has survived mobile. But they don't have the power Google has. Like they could have very easily, like I think if Mark Zuckerberg had more of a sense of commitment, he could have very easily had the same infrastructure that Google enjoys at this point. If you were conspiracy minded, I think one possible, I'm not sure this is what's happening. One possible is that really this is the big tech companies, and I'm going to include Apple in this, uh, saying, pulling up the ladder after them. You know, Apple just hired a major uh, Facebook advertising exec yeah. for its ads platform. What ads platform, you might ask? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't think Apple should be in the ad business like at all. Like, I think it's bad. Yeah, but they it, are. It's not money I think Apple should want. But their, their ad product, it's, it's ads inside the App Store and ads inside News Plus. And other native uh, and iOS sure they and Mac OS it. apps, it yeah. says here. So... Yeah, it's it's not a good product, and I don't think it, it's a business they should be in because it, it hurts their credibility on every other issue. Um, yeah, I mean, we, Apple doesn't break out how much it makes from advertising and its services revenue, so we don't and know. Steve was fine with iAds, so I don't I don't buy the argument that this is like a new Apple thing. It's just a, I think it's always been a dumb a dumb strategic move for them. Yeah. I say being CEO of an equally large company. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I were conspiracy minded, I would just say, hey, and, and I mean, I think that's what uh, Google has done with Flock and uh, killing third party cookies. They're just pulling the ladder up behind them, saying we got what we got all the information we need. Uh, mm -hmm. The heck with the rest of you. They have perfect knowledge. Yeah, so they don't care. I don't, and uh, I don't know. I just I maybe I'm silly to worry. I see what I see the impact it has on our business. Uh, very directly, and okay, uh, yeah. you know, and, and, and one of the reasons we started Club Twit is because I don't think advertising is going to work in independent podcasts for more than the next couple of years. After that, it's all going to Spotify, Apple, Facebook, all the companies that know that have perfect knowledge. In your words, Renee, which right? is what Spotify is doing. They're building out their platform with all the acquisitions they've right. been making as well. Right. So an independent yeah. podcast will be much like an independent blog <laughs> these days, which is a <laughs> hobby. And, uh, you know, or, or if, you know, if this kind of, uh, or if you get banned on all the social networks, yeah, or if this, uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, sovereign writer notion takes, uh, takes hold in, uh, and that's why we're doing the club twit. Hopefully people will support the shows that they like, and you can exist as a, as a ent entity without advertising. I don't think we could exist at the level we, uh, we exist right now that way, but who knows? We'll see. Depends how many people join club twit. Hint, hint. Uh, <laughs> wait, till, wait for Leo's newsletter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I start a Substack, you know, <laughs> it's, it's all over, man. Twitstack. It's, no, it's your own platform. You got to own it. It's got to yeah. be Twitstack. Well, we have, we do have a newsletter. I, you know, I just, uh, I, I understand people don't want to be tracked. Believe me, I use Firefox with Facebook, uh, you know, sandboxes, Facebook like buttons and stuff, so that nobody, the Facebook doesn't get any information. There's no, I don't have a Facebook account, so there's no 
you know, would have to be a, a shadow dossier, but they, I don't want to add to their shadow dossier of me. Um, you know, when I can, I uh, use a VPN when I do Google searches, things like that. But um, it's hard to protect yourself, your privacy, especially from first parties. And that's the real yeah. issue, I think, here is that first parties are going to get all the information they want. As long as you own the platform, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, YouTube is never going to have to worry about tracking. Yeah, it's so funny the, because there are people I hear from people who were mad that we had to put some trackers in our redirects. And they said, I'm just going to watch it on YouTube. And it was like, <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> and you can see, because like, if you look at SEO on Google versus SEO on YouTube, like SEO on Google to me, the difference between success and failure of your blog, SEO on YouTube means nothing because like all it matters is your video being good. Cause they have perfect knowledge of how long the person watches for what they watch, yeah. where they stop. There's There's no all these, they could care less about your tags yeah. and your titles. Yeah. I was like, I, I don't know if this was, uh, uh, Facebook says this was a uh, publicity stunt. I think it was real. Signal <laughs> bought these ads on Instagram. You know, you got this ad because you're a newlywed Pilates instructor and you're cartoon crazy. This ad used to be your location, used your location to see you're in La Jolla. You're into <laughs> parenting blogs and thinking about LGBTQ adoption. And, you know, there were a lot more of these. Facebook not only didn't take the buy, but uh, but according to Signal, and they do have a screenshot, disabled their ad account entirely. Like, no, <laughs> not only are you not going to buy those ads. I didn't see those ads, ads, I was about to say. Yeah, never saw those yeah. ads. And, and it, by the way, if you saw them, it, you would have seen one, you know, you would have, it would have been a small buy because it would be a small group of uh, people. Facebook says it was just a publicity stunt. They never bought the ads and we never canceled their... <laughs> their account and well, duh, signal look, disagrees. Think, look at what they were trying to get publicity for. Yes, yeah. of course, it was a publicity stunt. Okay? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a obviously. very important one. Yeah. And if you're signal and you're competing against Facebook Messenger, that's a message you'd like to get out is that, you know, Facebook yeah. knows everything, has perfect knowledge. Be between this and the Celebrite hack, they've been doing a lot of good work on behalf of privacy and yes. security for, for individuals. Yeah. Moxie so Mullen, good Marlon there. Spike got a, a Celebrite device. We actually didn't talk about that. <laughs> he said fell off a truck. Gosh, he was, he was walking around the road and gosh, he just bounced off a truck and <laughs> landed at his feet. <laughs> and found that it was very insecure, that it would be easy to exploit vulnerabilities in the Celebrite. Yeah, it's it's a hor it was a horrible story because it it uh, it showed that uh, the data that is on that, that is collected or is put onto that Celebrate device can't be trusted because the software itself is vulnerable to modification. That you could even just put a file on a phone that's being scanned. If if someone put pre preemptively put a, uh, a file on a phone that's going to be scanned, suddenly that machine that was being used with Celebrate is now infected and can be ordered to do whatever they want again, including delete information, main uh, create new information. Already, one trial lawyer uh, whose uh, uh, whose client got uh, uh, was uh, sentenced to jail based on evidence that was collected through Celebrate is asking for a new trial based on this evidence that hey, look, we d they didn't demonstrate that the Celebrate device that they used was not uh, hacked, was not was not manipulated in any way. This is and a device sold by an Israeli company used by law enforcement and border patrol and others uh, to snarf all the data off of your smartphone. And then analyze it and figure out, you know, whatever it is they're trying to figure out. Look at the, I, yeah. this is the, this is the Moxie's uh, Celebrate. And look at the dongles that yeah. <laughs> come with this thing. This is ready for anything. I just want the yeah. dongle case. Forget the Celebrate device. <laughs> Give me the dongles. It is, it, it, it is incredibly, it, it shows off a much bigger problem too, that uh, the, the technology based on identifying fingerprints, the technology that is based on uh, analyzing DNA evidence is public and can be scrutinized by people who are having that evidence used against them. We have, but Celebrite is this black box. Then there's, there is no way for, as far as I was able to tell after, after this story broke, I tried to learn as much as I could about Celebrite, which is very, very little. How do you know? Know that the data that was being pulled off of this device absolutely correlates to this particular suspect. Well, is no everything absolutely do. trustworthy? Yeah, in fact, yeah. Uh, it's, I it's would imagine can't be this, scrutinized. this blog post will be entered as evidence in many a case where the Celebrite data is the uh, yeah. evidence against oh, the yeah. defendant. Here's the, here's the quote from Moxie. For example, by including a specially formatted but otherwise <laughs> innocuous, innocuous file in an app on a device, in other words, your phone, that is then scanned by Celebrite, it's possible to execute code that modifies not just the Celebrite port report being created in that scan, but also all previous 
and future generated Celebrite reports from all previously scanned devices and all future scanned devices in any arbitrary way with no detectable timestamp changes or checksum failures. Your yeah. Honor, I ask a motion to... to uh, what is it? Uh, how do you say? Dismiss. Dismiss. Dismiss all charges. <laughs> all yeah. charges. I'm out of order. You're out of order. This whole yeah. celebrate machine is out of order. Yeah. And and it's and it's insane because I think most of the vulnerability is based on a version of I think FF MPEG that that was identified in 2010 and had been patched like almost immediately. But no, the makers of Celebrite were saying no, we'll just we'll just use the old old code. It'll work just fine for us. Nobody has and, access to our device. Why should we worry? Yeah, exactly. Except every every phone that you suck. Yeah. I, uh, I think I think wow. this is why the FTC in the next five years or so there's going to be some sort of uh, the FTC already like made a statement like a sort of a proactive statement saying that by the way if you think that if if you are if you are a manufacturer of, of tech, technology hardware or software and you think that just because Congress is deciding on new laws to pass to restrict your industry don't think that means that the FTC does not have power to put the hammer down on you because we, our traditional role is to say that if you are if you're if you are manufacturing and selling something that makes a promise you have to make sure that your that your product actually withholds so that ever promise and that includes software that promises to be secure or promises uh, to have no cultural uh, cultural biases against any one group all this sort of stuff so I, I would love to see that kind of extended a little further saying that look you have you don't just get to say shrug and oh gosh what a what a what, what a whoopsie we did why don't we just give us have our CEO give a fluffy interview to the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times even though he almost he or she almost never does that guess what there's now going to be consequences and now just like if you release tainted food uh, into the food supply, you are going to have to show exactly where this code came from, how it was developed, what measures, uh, how this problem happened, and what measures you're going to take right now to make sure this doesn't happen again. And without that, you're going to have to suffer penalties. I, uh, I'm a little disappointed. I thought somebody might mention my my lovely shirt. Today. I was going to say, you're very summery today. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Untuck It. You heard of Untuck It? Everybody's heard oh. of Untuck It. This is our sponsor uh, for this segment of the show is Untuck It. I love this shirt. The thing I love about this shirt is I have already worn... I, I mean, I don't... I, I'm clean. I'm a clean person. But I have already worn this shirt many times. But I was testing the wrinkle-free aspects of it. I've never ironed it. I think it looks great. Untuck It shirts are designed to bring us back to the world we used to live in. Remember that? Where you'd go <laughs> places, see people... Uh, I've gone out dancing in this shirt. It's exactly the, the the clothing you need to transition back to life as we know it. Things like, oh, just the, the phrase gets me excited. Dinner with friends. <gasps> Reuniting with family. <gasps> and especially vacations. I ordered a bunch of Untuckets for our uh, upcoming vacation. Untucket makes shirts designed to be worn untucked. The way you wear shirts. They, de <laughs> they design Untucket because... The untucked shirt is a tough style to get right. See that illustration where you, you see the shirt with the big shirt tails and it goes way too low? Untuck it has just the right length. Uh, it fits all shapes and sizes. And you look sharp even when you're at your most casual. By the way, these are performance shirts. Some of them, not all of them. I have the performance shirts. They wick sweat. They're great. Short sleeve button downs available. Polos made to beat the heat. I was wearing it the other day. It was 91 degrees in Petaluma. I loved it. They fit everybody, including my body. This is, uh, I think this is an XL, but they have sizes up to triple XL. All shapes and all sizes. In fact, 50 different size points. They have slim, relaxed, tall fits. You can get the fit that'll work just for you. And I love the variety of fabrics. I, I just, <clears throat> having, you know, I just assumed it's all going to be, uh, you know, poly or something. But no, they have, um, this is all cotton. They have linen. They do have uh, performance fabrics as well. I love the wrinkle-free collection. This is wrinkle-free cotton, and it's fantastic. Every batch of fabric is tested to ensure the highest possible quality and consistency. So they all fit and look perfect. Buttons, downs, polos, tees, henleys. They literally have the highest quality control standards in the industry. Every shirt is checked five times to ensure they retain shape, color, and strength and I and the customer service awesome awesome I just love my entire I got a whole bunch of them and I've got more coming up for the trip to Hawaii if you're looking for, I want to wear that linen I love linen in hot climate wrinkle free linen whoever heard of that 
but it's true. If you're looking for shirts for your return to the office or just to look sharp again or for that special dinner with someone, Untuck It has you covered there as well. Check out the wrinkle-free collection. Whether you prefer short or long sleeves, you'll be ready to get back to work. 85 stores, you can, you can go in and, and look at them. They have stores nationwide. And they also offer free returns, free exchanges. So there's no reason not to try them, whether it's mail order or going into the store. Here comes summer. Now's the perfect time to try out an Untuck It shirt that's right for you. U-N-T-U-C-K, Untuck It. Dot com. Now, we do have an offer code with a really good offer. Use the code TWIT, T-W-I-T. You'll get 20% off your first purchase. So buy a bunch of stuff. Untuckit.com. Offer code TWIT. Untuckit. Shirts designed to be worn untucked. Although you could tuck them in if you wanted to be a renegade. <laughs> Wild, man. I, should I stand up and show you? This is... They come... This is, uh, this is one of the dress shirts. They come just the right length, right here. They yeah. uh, they they it's told Apple me mid, mid zipper. It's Apple keynote length, exactly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I bet you Apple has a, a, a outstanding account with uh, with Untuck It. I just love their stuff. Anyway, welcome Untuck It. Uh, first time they've been on the show, and uh, it's great to have you. And uh, maybe you've noticed, but I've been looking extra sharp in the last few weeks. We are learning more and more about Apple thanks to the Apple epic battle. I get the feeling, Andy and Renee, you go home at night and read the transcripts from the trial. <laughs> I don't know why. I just feel like yeah, you know. it's Apple's. Apple's not going to. Apple is one of the most close to the vest uh, controllers of their own PR and their own public perception as there is. Th these lawsuits are the only opportunity that we have to find out even innocuous stuff that doesn't feel like it means anything. Here's how Apple operates inside. Here's who is talking to whom when there's a problem. Uh, and here's how fast uh, they're able to react to something. So yeah, this is a treasure trobe, uh, trove of information. Um, for me and this happened, by the that? way, it, with Samsung and Google as well, with other trials. Discovery yes. is a bitch. Yeah. yeah. It's Go amazing. ahead, Renee. It's the best thing ever. We yeah. wouldn't know anything about like the early history of anything if we didn't have these. <laughs> that's really but true. The, the thing for me, right. The thing for me that's hilarious about all of this isn't that isn't the companies. Like the companies, I expect Apple to say that, you know, we're doing this, we're fighting for the privacy of the user. And I expect Epic to say we're on the side of the developer. And I know I don't believe any of that. But and but the coverage is so depressing to me because nobody acts like these are businesses. They're buying completely into either <laughs> They're doing the like they're they're outraged that the businesses are acting like businesses, or they've bought all the nonsense about the altruism of these companies. And I just like if you boil it all down, Apple's just saying yes, of course, our, we and our favorite partners get the sweetheart deals. And Epic <laughs> saying yes, of course, we want to be you, but until we can be you, we want the sweetheart deal. And that's all they keep lying. Well, not lying is a harsh word. They just keep saying it's like all the. And then people look, oh, look, Apple discussed app rate commission rate. Yes, they would be incompetent if they didn't. <laughs> but it's like, oh, my God, they, they discussed it. It's just, it's, it's exhausting. There's also Wait a minute. You, you, mean, you mean that they, they didn't provide a version of iMessage for Android on the basis that it would help them sell more iPhones? Shocking. What? I'm shocked. Yes. <laughs> I'm playing God of War, not on an Xbox, and I'm shocked by here's the uh, Here's a, an example of what you're missing if you don't read the transcripts. Thanks to The Verge. This is an exchange between, uh, this is in the sixth day of the trial, uh, Epic's vice president of marketing, Matthew Weisinger, and uh, Apple's attorney. And here we go. Apple attorney, uh, we have in front of us a new set of images. Uh, what is what is this uh, screen showing? Uh, this is your matchmaking lobby. Uh, and we have a large yellow banana here, don't we? In a tuxedo. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, that's Peely. And that's <laughs> Peely, did you say? Yeah. And in fact, in the tuxedo, he's known as Agent Peely. Am I correct, sir? Uh, that's correct. We thought it better to go with the suit than the naked banana, since we are in <laughs> federal court this morning. Apparently a callback to Apple's contention that Epic hosts porn on its itch.io game store, which I find not exactly true. Epic Attorney, this is the Epic Attorney now, uh, uh, a little bit of a discretion. We talked about Peely, our banana. Remember that? Weisinger, I do. Uh, and there might have been an implication that to show Peely without a suit would have been 
inappropriate. Do you recall that? Yeah. Is there anything inappropriate about Peely without a suit? No, there is not. Uh, if we could just put a, put on the screen a picture of Peely, who is, by the way, again, a banana. Is there anything inappropriate about Peely without clothes? Uh, it, it's it's just a banana, ma'am. And he's so ripe, Leo. He's so ripe. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, I mean, and remember, there's no jury here. This is all for the judge who must just be going. so much pity and empathy for her. I know. Oh. I know. You guys grow up. Grow up. It's just a, a banana. It's yeah. embarrassing. It's, it's a little embarrassing. I felt it, it reminded me of every time when I was a little kid and I was in such deep trouble with my dad and he wanted to extend the pain by saying, <laughs> so you wanted to set a, start a fire, yes? Well, yes. What, and, and, you and you decided that maybe the, 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 the stairwell inside the basement was the best place to set that fire. Well, yeah. And why didn't you choose to say, do the fire in the fire pit in the backyard? Well, <laughs> you're, you're just walk, you're just you just feel like being walked into the kill zone. Your Honor, I submit this man is guilty. <laughs> Wait, just one more question. Addie, Addie, one more thing. <laughs> Addie Robertson had had a tweet that was so good. I had to bookmark it. Where he's, he's quoting part of the, the, the part of the, uh, the the conversation. Lawyer quote: A death run is where the player has to make it across the island without getting killed. Correct. And then Addie said, "This testimony is way more fun if you imagine it's a mad scientist being put on trial for war crimes." <laughs> uh, actually, we call that a corpse run. I just want to say, but okay. Uh, is it's an entertainment site. So the Verge actually changed their tagline to what the lawyer said in court. It was brilliant. Oh, so funny. Uh, so funny. What was the tagline? Do you have something it? like? Are you familiar with the Verge? And they're like, yes, it's an it's it's some sort of entertainment <laughs> property or something. So now the Verge's tagline today it's says some sort, some of, sort of entertainment, entertainment property. property. Oh my god! Like that, yeah. Oh, here it is. Yeah, some kind of entertainment type website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good on you. Good on you, Verge. That's like reading the hey, apple hey, of it all. Hey, he, he couldn't have said it in court if it wasn't true. I, I would I would be promoting the <laughs> hell out of that. I'd be very proud. <laughs> hey, he said it we were entertainment type. But, yeah. <laughs> entertainment, some kind of entertainment type website. Uh, so uh, what else have we learned? We learned that a little bit more about the app review process. I was glad to know this. This was all very interesting. <clears throat> in a document uh, filed with the trial... Uh, this is from Tristan uh, Kosminka, who is uh, one of the heads of the App Store for Apple. Uh, Kosminka said five, this is amazing, five million apps are submitted to the store every year. Uh, the app rejection rate is less than 40%. Of those rejected, 215,000, uh, which is out of 1.7 million, uh, infringed privacy guidelines in some way. So that's really not most of the problems in there 500 people so let me let me do some math because there's 500 people that's about a, a hundred thousand apps a week uh, which would be uh if my math is correct twenty thousand apps a day which would if my math is correct be 400 apps per day per person so if you worked an eight hour day that's 50 apps an hour that's a lot of apps to go through fast you got about a minute per yeah. app Right. Uh, yeah. I guess they have. Do they use they use automated tools to do that? Right. Yeah. Most of the time, automated tools. And, and one of the most interesting pieces of, of of evidence from here was a photo of one of the testers' actual workstations. That's just like eight, nine, ten screens, including an Apple TV screen, every device screen possible, uh, and the the amount of work that they have to hands. When it comes to the point of having to do a hands on exploration, that yeah, it's not a it's not a simple linear process. Yeah. Um, they also say that only about 1% of people, of developers, appeal rejections. Most of them just fix it, um, which probably tells you also something about the nature of the rejection. It's not something difficult to, to yeah. change or fix, you know. In most cases, I think that's probably the case. Although 1% of 1.7 million is not <clears throat> an insignificant number. That's quite a few people who appeal. Uh, what else? Do, what else have we learned? Uh, is that is that the or is, there, is that the extent of our learnings from this week's epic Apple update? I think so. 
Uh, there, there was one, uh, whether a story slash non-story uh, about what happened in the 2017 hack, uh, where uh, uh, where Xcode, a, a, a legal version of Xcode that was po- that was available in China, was used to inject malware or spyware into uh, a bunch of iOS apps that actually made it onto the App Store, and they inclu- the, so the testimony included a lot of the, or excuse me, at least the evidence that was presented uh, included a lot of the conversations inside of Apple about what to do about it, where it was caught fairly. They, they, they made a lot of movements uh, as soon as they discovered it, but there was a conversation about, well, potentially 125 million iPhones were affected by this. Should we inform all of these users about how, how oh, should we inform right. users of this problem? Yes. Uh, and and so the, there was a conversation about, well, well, we'll have to localize the warning for for a multiple all different, different markets. languages. Yeah, and they and, and in the end, it depend. You could tell the how partisan certain news agencies are. Some of them said, "Oh, well, Apple covered up 100, uh, 120 uh, had a had a, a, a security problem with 125 million users, and they didn't tell any of them." Uh, or and the others would be more sober and say, "Well, they just decided the best way to do it, which is to say, hey, we had this sort of a breach.' They've talked about it in broadest possible terms. Here are some of the apps that have been affected. Unfortunately, there were thousands of them, so you couldn't just really there were 2,500, and they only mentioned the top 25 so yeah but they but that, that was probably uh, i don't think that was in the testimony but that was i'm betting that was probably based on well how many how many uh, how many people would have been affected by the top five and that would probably have covered nearly uh, all of them yeah like i said if you, if you present someone with hey check this list of 2500 apps to see if you've been affected by this that's a long uh, list yeah and did apple the kill other- the other thing is if apple has the ability i don't know if they did it to take pull all those apps off your phone i don't think they did i think they pulled them all from the app store but there was some concern that those apps could still be on your phone installed yeah um so this i thought this i don't know you think this i thought this i understand why apple didn't want to send 125 million emails yeah. out in in 33 Localized. languages yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i can understand the difficulty and yet it feels as if they didn't they they might have downplayed this. Most they of, could have been more aggressive. I think this yeah. was uh, this was the uh, Xcode Ghost, which was offered mostly to Chinese developers as a version of Xcode from Chinese servers you could download faster. In fact, it carried a malware payload that allowed arbitrary execution of code on iPhones that could be used to exfiltrate information from iPhones. Most of the people downloading it were in China. Um, 18 million in the U.S., but 128 million total. So most of them were in China, uh, and because it was mostly Chinese apps that used this. And there's probably, I guess it's speculative, but I would speculate that maybe this was the Chinese government looking to, um, you know, get some apps on the phone that they could use to to spy on their uh, citizens. But that's purely speculative on my part. Um, I and that might though have had something to do with Apple's reluctance to make too big a deal of it. I don't know. Um, four four thousand apps actually uh, total. Apple knew of twenty five hundred, but uh, but malware yeah. researchers say four thousand total apps impacted. Yeah. By this. this is the sort of stuff that we're very very grateful for because I'm a big fan of accountability. It's one thing for Apple to say that oh well we we've got the most secu- we've got a, a, a trustworthy, secure, safe place to get apps. That's fine, and I'm sure that that is your goal. But how well are you doing towards that goal? What have been the slip ups? They're not going to talk about that. So if they're going to make a statement again, getting back to the FTC, if you make a promise about something, you have to be able to defend that promise. And unfortunately, we only get stories like these when there is a discovery phase of, a, of an important trial. And this is, App, App, I'm sure that Apple realizes that uh, th- this lawsuit is probably going to go away and end in their favor, but it's just the first, it's just rehearsal for the big uh, court problems that they're going to be having defending their choices and running the App Store, because that is the target. That is the that is the thermal, the, the thermal port, exhaust port on the Death Star in terms of regulatory uh, agencies attacking, uh, attacking Apple. It's all about the App Store. Apple also said at the time that n- there was they never thought that there was no information to suggest the malware is used for any malicious purpose, um, and and now that we know it's so widely uh, distributed, I have to say, how would you know? Yeah. Uh, and or that who might else have is been, using it, huh? Or who else is using it? Like or who I always else think is using you, it? You, yeah. you know the the person who has the exploit. You don't know the other ten people who have the exploit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Apple, I think you could. It, I don't want to. I, I think it'd be safe to say. Apple downplayed it. Is that fair, yeah. Andy? 
I, I, I agree with that. I, I do think they could have been a lot more aggressive. Um, I was disagree. My only disagreement was with the 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 strength of some of the headlines that was based on this, uh, because it is technically true that they did not, uh, they could, they, they, they could have informed every, they certainly have records of who has downloaded what app when. And so they certainly had the ability to say, well, here's a list of everybody who might've downloaded an app that we know to have been infected by this malware. They apparently did not do that. That was certainly within their power. And they certainly, I think that that would have been prudent if they really want to, uh, if they really want to keep that crown on their head about being, we are the company that runs the best app store that protects its users most aggressively. However, I don't think that it goes, it falls all the way into the category of they were irresponsible. They were reckless. They were derelict in the responsibility. They had a response. It was just not the best response right. for users. Well, there's two ways. If you want to say we are the most secure app store, there's two ways to assert that one well, is to yeah. have it actually be <laughs> secure. The other would be to yeah. say we have the most secure app store. And, and, not and here's how low, the bar is <laughs> yes yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh there's also uh, uh in in the same discovery information about the uh this jekyll app a researcher uh, showed that you'd be possible to put a benign app on the uh, it, through the app review process, get it on the phone and then modify it in such a way that would, it would be then be dangerous. And that actually upset Phil Schiller in the email uh, uh, exchange. He said, you know, we got to, this is not good. We got to fix this because, uh, and, well, that's and what Epic did. Yeah. Fortnite. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. Here, yeah. uh, here is, you mentioned the, uh, the, the, the images from Apple's app review process. This is Stephen Troughton Smith tweeting this. Uh, it seems like he says they create a trust score of your app based on a list of binary and metadata criteria and then review what's changed between versions. Um, of course, yeah. do you think the first time, the first version that goes up in the store then gets a, a more scrutiny than, than subsequent revisions? Is That's what that implies, right? Hmm. That they might have kind of semi-automate the, uh, the update yeah. process. What, what, what one of the faults that internally they identified was that um, uh, one fault in their review pot process was that they were checking for calls to APIs, but they weren't checking the APIs themselves. Right. That, that's what so, Schiller was mad yeah. about. He said that's exactly what how Jekyll got through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's what he was uh, actually mad about. Here's another image from uh, the Netflix App reviewers claim app submissions as they go through and then are notified which elements have changed since the last approved version. So thank you, Stephen Trout and Smith, for, for finding yeah. all this in the epic material. It's a, I have to say, I have, not been, I have not been reading every single part of the transcript because as we have seen, so much of that is. And so how would you define a mouse click? Would it have to be done with a mouse? Oh. No. Uh, well, could it be done with a trackpad? Yes. Well, how about a pointy device? Yes. And because they, because all of these all of these people being deposed are trained that the answer to the question, do you know what time it is, is not it's six fifty four. It is yes, I know what time it is. And it's, it's just, <laughs> it, it is, you have to walk them through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yep. was such a disaster. They can't define a video game. Nobody can define a video game except yep. they know it when they see it. It was the worst. Wow. But that, again, Andy's pointing out, uh, very importantly, you, you read these transcripts, you might assume, oh, this is idiotic. But that is the, Roblox but the, a the, video game? The is witnesses Fortnite? are taught not to over-answer, right? Merely yeah. answer exactly yeah. the question you're asked. Don't be helpful, in other words. And uh, a normal person joke, would, right, with the politician where he's like, what was the question? Can you repeat that? I don't recall. What was the question? Can you repeat that? I don't <laughs> right, recall. Right, right, right. Let's waste as much time as uh, as possible. Apparently, Apple oh, is, sorry. It's gonna... <laughs> Apple has made uh, some acquisitions in this area. Trout and Smith uh, talks about Source DNA. They got them in 2016 for the binary analysis. Uh, App Authority. They looked at them, but they didn't acquire them. Symantec did later. Isn't this is great? I you got to follow Steve because uh, his stuff is yeah. He's a genius. Really well. And he's also wonderful apps for the autistic spectrum. He, yeah, he's just to me. He's 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 a uh, he's the perfect kind of hacker geek. You know, he's a guy you want to follow because he really uh, he's he gets in the weeds of the whole thing. And he makes Grace, which is one of the best apps for autistic uh, spectrum. Yeah, is he autistic or he he's just nice? He just no. I, he's just he's just uh, an awesome makes, person. Just makes it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yep. Uh, we should actually talk a little bit about Apple's acquisition policies because this is kind of an interesting uh, article on. How Apple uh, buys companies and, 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 and what they do. Let me see if I can uh, find that uh, in the rundown. I know it's in here somewhere. 
I should have had this ready to go. They walk up and they say, you're a feature, not a platform. We're going to buy you. <laughs> Here's a shiny nickel. Come along now. Do you want to keep selling sugar water to kids or yeah. do you want to come and change <laughs> yeah. the world? That's the famous Fine. Show up on Monday for orientation. Make sure you watch the video. Next. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mark does that. He sits you in a room for nine months and you don't do anything and you leave. Very solid, very solidly. <laughs> you're talking about uh, Zuckerberg, of course. Yeah. Um, Just so, say his name three times. Apple buy. Is this the article? I'm trying to find the article. I love that he now thinks that the, that the problem with Facebook uh, PR is that he hasn't been as personable on social networks as he needs to be. <laughs> and that if he's only smiling more on social networks, all their other problems will disappear. It's such a Zuckerbergian solution. More paddleboarding dressed as it the clown. That's what I think he should be doing. <laughs> Just live your best life, Mark. <laughs> oh, well, I am looking through here and I, I don't have it here, so... Um, it's, it came from, uh, the Apple, uh, analysts call, I guess. So it's, it's just about how a Apple's attitude towards uh, acquisitions, but I guess we, we've already talked about it. So. Yeah. They don't do big yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah they they, they tend do, not to do big yeah, ones. They're mostly aqua hires. They right? want the technology or yeah, people yeah. or, yeah. Uh, Apple's, yeah. by the way, this is kind of breaking news, facing a rather large class action suit in the UK for overcharging in the app store. Damages could be two billion dollars. So add this to the EU's action. This one's a court action, a lawsuit in uh, in the UK filed at London's Competition Appeal Tribunal yesterday. It calls for the U.S. firm to compensate UK iPhone and iPad users for years of alleged overcharging. They estimate that Apple could face paying out in excess of one and a half billion pounds, which is two point one uh, wait, billion dollars. Just wait till they find out what the margin is on V bucks and Polka coins. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. Yep. The suit described by Apple as meritless, filed a week into the uh, epic trial, and of course, uh, the the week after, the EU also goes after. The App Store. It's this funny is, how the App Store thing, they argued about like how easily kids should be able to buy V-Bucks. And the judge was like, I'm not sure making it a little bit harder to buy V-Bucks is a bad thing. Yeah. No and they're like, we're just thinking about convenience. We just we just mean convenience. Uh -huh. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Do you, well, I, how do you think it's going? If having, having followed this now, it's been a couple of weeks. Uh, can you read into uh, the judge's response to uh, some of this stuff? Is Do you think she's in feeling one way or the other at this point? The analysts are saying that they, they largely expect Apple to win a trial, but then to suffer in regulation afterwards. And I think that's probably yeah. an accurate take. Because of the things that we're learning about Apple? I think just the, the climate, the, the general the climate. climate. I think Andy yeah. described it really well yeah. last week. Yeah. Remember that we have 50 states attorneys general that are preparing to work together to pursue antitrust activity against uh, big tech. That this is almost, un it's hard to find a really good precedent for this where it's not that we, we each of these uh, states realizes that we don't have the budget to fight Facebook directly or fight Apple directly or fight even Twitter directly. However, if we share all of the data that we're doing and we sort of part partition things up, we can really do some damage and have a lot of bargaining power when it comes to uh, looking for new regulations. So yeah, this is this is not the start of this is not the middle of anything. This is just the start of the start. Apparently, the the Are judge. Are sure this isn't a stimulus package for lawyers? Is this <laughs> it all. It always stimulus is. Stimulus package for lawyers. <laughs> it always hey, is. Man. Hey man, I, I got I got thirty one dollars because I was being overcharged by AT and T. Man, that is that is like uh, not just like takeout burritos. That's like dinner at a Mexican restaurant. So I, got I feel well served. I got for seventeen fifty. I can't believe you got thirty bucks, man. Yeah, well, but the lawyer I, I, got I, I, the, I, a Lamborghini in a <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, there's a lot of us and fewer of those. Oh, oh, like 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 I'm gonna be parking my Lamborghini in front of tract housing. <laughs> Think. <Right. laughs> uh, the judge does uh, apparently. Uh, judge Rogers apparently objects uh, to Epic's continued attempts to admit some documents into evidence. E Epic is obviously going for the scorched earth. You know, let's let's make this look as bad for Apple as possible, uh, questioning the relevancy in some cases. Um, and I think Epic is probably just saying, look, let's use this discovery as an opportunity to, to hurt Apple in general, whether yeah. it helps us in the trial or not. It helps. It helps. It helps them to speed up a conclusion of the trial that's favorable to Spotify. It's there so many. When you look at history, so many wars are not fought based on we will win this war. It's though we, we will win the negotiated the negotiated settlement later on. Yeah. And I think that this is. I think uh, despite having 
having been a very powerful start off the blocks when they filed the suit, when Apple did not instantly fold or acquiesce, that became how much pressure can we put on Apple to make to basically let's negotiate and settle this so that they never ha- they don't have to keep a lot of their vice presidents and executives in depositions. But they don't have to keep uh, offering sho- shoveling all this information to journalists uh, for commentators to to make really really snarky comments about. So this is all about uh, maintaining pressure. What about the revelation? I think we always knew this that some developers are whitelisted and can use their own stores hulu it turns out yeah. could use could switch switch from app store billing to hulu billing uh i we i think amazon got that kind of privilege as, as well at one point that's the part yeah. i was talking about at the beginning it's like that is like if i buy 12 oranges i get slightly less per orange than if i buy you know like one orange and it's those those general business things that typically like these are our best customers these are our peers these people can hurt us the same way we can hurt them these aren't just generic customers we have to cave to them on some of these issues and that's just business but anytime it but apple first says we don't we treat every developer the same which is nonsense like it's we know yeah. it's nonsense and i hate that i hate when a company says something that we know is fake because they think we're too dumb to know that it's false that, that to yeah. me is like the worst one of the worst things, but then people react to it like, "Oh my God, there's business going on in these businesses," <laughs> and that's like, but that's exactly what we expect. Like they can negotiate. Amazon can say, you, "You're not going. We're not going to put Prime on your Dungle box if you don't give us this on your phone dick- doohickey." And the Apple like, "Oh damn, okay, yeah. <laughs> it's Amazon. We can't just force them." And there's so much of their arguments that makes perfect sense. It's like if, if I'm a professional house painter, why do why am I forced to uh, to hire somebody to paint my house as part of the agreement I have of living in this living in this neighborhood? That's the situation where look, we're Amazon. We know we've minimized our cost for payment processing. We've got that on lock. We can pay a lot more for payment processing than you're going to charge us for processing these payments. Why are you demanding that we use your far more expensive and certainly far less useful for our purposes payment system? Uh, you, you're, we're going to have to negotiate our way out of this. There was also uh, an email from Matt Fisher, VP of uh, App Store. Apparently, at one point, Apple's accessibility team wanted an app store editorial feature on apps that implemented voiceover support, and they, they wanted to include Google and Amazon applications. And uh, uh, Matt Fisher, well, an Apple executive wrote that Matt, Matt Fisher, feels extremely strongly about not featuring our competitors on the app store. Uh, on the stand, Fisher said, uh, no, that's not true. We've repeatedly promoted apps that are competitors, but they, they do have that one email. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, they have. I, mean, I went again, and checked, and there's a lot of features for those apps, which is a weird. Again, like it's just a weird thing to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and, and you know, I think to say and one executive doesn't like that is maybe <laughs> a little indirect, and so not right. exactly uh, <laughs> germane. Um, let's take a little break. I want to talk about a big Apple hire and what you all think about that in just a little sec. But first, a word from our sponsor. I, uh, I'm going to demo all the products on the show today. I showed my, uh, I showed my shirt. <laughs> and now I'd like to drop trow because I'm going to show you the... Ugh. No, never mind. <laughs> we won't, we won't I, be... You, the, 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 the eyebrow trimmer. You, the eyebrow trimmer. Yes. The eyebrow trimmer. Actually, I need the eyebrow trimmer. And I, you can actually, and I have used the Manscaped lawnmower as an eyebrow trimmer. Uh, but it's obviously for uh, grooming your, uh, your personal uh, areas. Manscaped our go-to for men's below the waist and, in my case, above the eye, grooming products. There is a new Manscaped product in town. It's time to stop, drop, and order the brand-new shaving kit that they have just introduced, the Ultra Smooth Package. You know, you know they're very well known for their uh, their clipper, the lawnmower, and the lawnmower 4.0 just came out, but this is the Ultra Smooth Package package with a razor in it. Sometimes, uh, you know, if you really want that close shave, you want to use an actual razor. But this is not, you don't want to use just any old razor. This is a special razor, a specialized shaving kit to help keep you buff and to protect and smooth your most sensitive areas. The Crop Shaver, the Crop Exfoliator, <laughs> and the Crop Gel. It's time to crop... The hedges, as you might uh, say, get right to the roots with a discount just for you. 20% off plus free shipping at Manscaped, 
M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D.com slash twit. This is from the legends who introduced the first electric uh, below the bell hair trimmer. Now a razor with the crop gel designed to really make that a smooth experience. And the crop exfoliator, which is a gentle exfoliant for the groin area. Or for you, Renee, I'll say it in French. Excellent. No, pardonne-moi. Pardonnez-moi. Exfoliant <laughs> du pour le zone du entrejambe. Did you know that that's uh, what it's called? <laughs> le zone d'entrejambe. The between area the between the legs. It? Yeah. <laughs> it, says nice. so. it says so right here. <laughs> I know it must be true. Um, my my inner my the, the my inner knees are totally out of control. Yeah, out of control. Now that, now well, that actually, it's now that it's, now that it's board short season, I got to get those knees. To in be board. honest, you know, if if you've got hair coming out of the bottom of your shorts, you probably need to manscape <laughs> just a little bit. I'm just saying, exfoliant du pour la zone d'entrejambe. It's so so classy. Everything when you put it sounds that way. better in French. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you no longer have to borrow your lady's uh, razor to get that precise trim. Trim. This has two uh, 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 pads for the uh, smooth, you know, uh, glide. You know, it's a three-step kit to make your package perfect. The crop exfoliator is infused. With ingredients that can soothe, clear, and keep the skin on and around your uh, manly parts re feeling refreshed. The crop exfoliator can help reduce the risk of ingrown hairs. That's actually a good thing. The crop gel, you can see where you're shaving. Uh, with our unique clear shaving gel, just for you and uh, le, le, la zone d'entrejambe, if you will. Uh, it's like a spa treatment with four essential oils every time you shave. It smells fantastic, too. And then the crop shaver itself was designed for uh, shaving in those uh, tricky zones. Let me, uh, let me open it up and uh, show you. It's kind of it's cute. Three precision blades, extra wide lubricating strips. Impossible to get into. That's to keep your lady out of there. Look how little this is. It's so cute. Uh, nice. Yeah. And a pivoting head. So you really, you need this. Let me just put it this way. There's a reason <laughs> this is so uh, delicate, shall we say. It's not your average razor. It's smaller, but it's thicker, so it's easy to hold. The micro comb bar allows for the best shave possible from any angle. You know about the micro comb bar? I've, I've been learning about the micro comb bar. All three of these... <laughs> Of course, vegan and cruelty free because you wouldn't you wouldn't want to test this out on a goat or a llama or anything. That would just be cruel. Uh, also, so, also the the three <laughs> blades and the glide slip, that's also cruelty free for your own person. So that's, yes, cruelty. Let's not is, skip over that. One need not be cruel to oneself. <laughs> cruelty begins at to home. look good. Yes, <laughs> these are all sulfate free as well. So actually, it, actually, that is sincerely true. You don't want to put a lot of chemicals in the more sensitive areas of your anatomy. So you really do want to have something that's designed uh, particularly for that part. I don't know if you have you ever used. I don't want to get too intimate here. But if you've ever used a shave gel not intended uh, for those areas, it really can get a little spicy. I mean, just let me just put it that way. You you really want the crop it's a, it's a memor it's a memorable experience. It's, it's something it's, you'll never forget, ladies. It's it's it's, it's, it's what dog shaving. trainers would call a corrective action. <laughs> it's time to get. Oh, that smells good. It's time to get your lady will like that too, or or guy. I'm not. You know, there you go. Uh, it's time to get up close and personal with the best tools for the job. The ultra smooth package. From Manscaped, get 20% off. That's a big discount. And free shipping. You get both at manscaped.com slash twit. 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped, M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D dot com slash twit. Smooth it out, fellas, with Manscaped. Your, what, what is it again? La zone d'entrejambe will thank you. <laughs> It's so much better in French. <laughs> La zone <laughs> d'entrejambe. I'm going to use that uh, Use that in a sentence. Uh, thank you, Manscaped. We appreciate your support. Now it smells really good in here. Mm. Merveilleuse. 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 How would you say that? Say it in French. La zone d'entrejambe. La zone d'entre les jambes. D'entre les jambes. 
I think they left out the leg so, but it's like, between the legs. It's, it's all cultural differences. Oh, you think that's the Canadian way to say it, huh? Mm. Yeah, and well, we'd say it with a Quebecer accent too. So, <laughs> uh, on we go with the show. Big new hire, Cisco's uh, former uh, head of PR, Stella Lowe, is now head of PR, replacing Phil Schiller at Apple, former communications Leave it, chief. Phil Schiller. <laughs> yeah. Now, so did so didn't Phil Schiller? Wasn't he replaced by Jaws or no? That's not. I don't understand what happened. Here. So yeah. So when Steve um, when Steve left Apple, uh, Phil took over running the PR group, and when Phil became an Apple fellow, he gave marketing over to Jaws. Like worldwide product marketing went over to Greg Jawsweak, but he kept the App Store. He kept uh, Apple events. He's he's still running all the Apple events, and he kept leadership of the PR group. And now that's going to to Stella. I see. I see. So. Uh it takes two to get the job that Phil used to do all by himself uh, done. Well, I mean, they, they previously they had a VP of PR. He, Steve just left. Dowling left. And oh, that's so right. So she's had, really replacing yeah, they, Dowling as much as she's replacing. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Phil was like interiming it until they found got the it. Got it. Got it. Got it. She uh, was uh, senior vice president of communications at Dell. She worked at Unisys. Uh, she will report to no one lower than Tim Cook. She's a direct report to the CEO. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll all get to know her well, a lot part better. Of the job. It's like Dowling was Steve's was uh, Tim's body person, the same way Katie Cotton was Steve's body person. Right, and right. my guess is that the most one of the most important parts of this is to be that person for Tim. Yeah, you'd see that with Steve Jobs would go to Macworld or whatever. She she would hover. Yeah. There there they'd be same with Dowling and Tim Cook. Yeah. Yeah. So presumably we'll see more of Stella Lowe. Uh, I I know nothing about her. Um, I assume she's a good hire. Yeah, she, she has a good track record. She was uh, only recently at Cisco. She started there just a couple of years ago. She used to be based in New England, moved there a couple of years ago. The fact that she that she was snapped up so quickly kind of it indicates the amount of respect that they uh, that Apple would have for a particular uh, someone who is reporting directly to Tim. The only surprise on my part is that. Uh, I I would not have been let's say I would not have been surprised if they had chosen someone who maybe was not necessarily primarily tech oriented someone who was very very well versed in uh, I don't want to go as far as to say disaster PR but here is when when the company is due to spend the next five years being assaulted on all sides by regulators you need to be yeah. able to present a very very balanced view of who your company is what they stand for and what they actually contribute and so I, I'm sure I'm sure she I'm sure she's on top of it but I'm so I'm not saying that I'm not saying that I'm disappointed or surprised that they made this kind of a choice. I'm just saying that I would not have been surprised if they had chosen someone who had uh, experience in a, a a company of of comparable size, but not necessarily in the same industry that is used to dealing with the government legislation. Government and, uh, yeah. legislation being yeah. part of yeah. their portfolio. Uh, clearly, she she is well known in the business press as well, and that's probably a lot of where the battle gets fought. Is, yeah. is in the press, right? And getting people well, like Well, Dowling came from CNBC, right? So right. he was a journalist right. who, who went to Apple and became uh, head of corporate communications and then went, Katie retired, right. became VP of, of PR. So this is a different direction. So actually Dowling's been gone for, for two years. So it really has, I guess yeah. you could say this this role has been empty for two years, but they really do need somebody full-time. I mean, full Phil's time super capable. Point. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. The interesting right. thing for me is that the person who went the person who used to run Tesla PR and now runs Facebook PR is former Apple PR. So they're obviously well-versed at dealing with some of the most controversial companies in the world. So I think that that part, they might feel like they have a bit of a handle a, on it, and they probably want somebody who's... Do you think they were looking for a wartime consigliere? I mean, is it is it really that crisis... Focus. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so because they could have made a much more aggressive choice here. I think they were looking for someone who came with the right portfolio of skills. I think the most important thing by far would have been how compatible are you with the culture here at Apple? Because the people that they hire, they tend they they tend to hire people who stay there for the rest of their careers. They don't have people who who leave to start their own companies at that sort of uh, direct report level. Yeah. So a lot of it was probably wanting to find out: is this someone who understands what we're about, uh, who knows exactly not what our immediate goals 
are, but what our goals are for the history of the company have been. And is this someone that uh, is this someone who will uh, be be good to work for, but also not hesitant to say, why aren't you? Why are you still here in this meeting? Why aren't you out directly on a, on a flight to China right yes. now to solve the problem that we just talked about? So that's probably that's probably why she was Her hired. first and job. Culture, is, right? is like to, cult, they don't want Broward again. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah that yeah, didn't turn yeah, out well for yeah, anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Her first job is go over to DXO Mark with a bag of cash and say, what can we do to improve our scores? <laughs> because no, I would mean. be happy if Apple that's never mean. mentioned DXO Mark. I get I sad anytime any of them tweet DXO Mark. I know. Uh, or uh, DisplayMate, or it, I'm not it, disparaging these for legal purposes. I'm not disparaging not dis, not these to companies. Disparage I just them. It's, Sometimes it seems a little odd. The, the picks. It's problematic that the companies that pay consulting fees to learn how to do good yep. at the well at the test end up doing well at the tests. I think yeah. those are those things shouldn't be should not be in the same company. Yeah. Uh, Apple's iPhone 12 Pro Max coming in fourth in the DxO Mark battery competition. After the Samsung Galaxy M51, the Wiko Power U30, and the Oppo Find X3 Neo. You know, you're always going to be able to find phones like that that have great battery life that aren't great phones. I mean, they It looks just, like yeah. Google stopped paying for consulting completely. And I don't see Google on here at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then Vivo, Huawei, Xiaomi, OnePlus, Motorola, G9 Power. Well, I could testify to that. I gave my daughter that. It's got great battery life. The S21 Ultra from Samsung. Uh, is kind of way down the list there. It's it's uh, the most expensive phone uh, at, on the list, actually. It reminds me of those classic consulting rackets where like, oh, you want your business to go up two points in the Magic Quadrant. Well, that'll be, yeah. you know, $100,000 in consulting fees. Oh, yeah. look at that. You went down. Yeah. Or, okay. hey, we're, we're having an industry awards banquet. Uh, how many seats at our $10,000 yeah. <laughs> table can we put you down for? And that, I'm not I'm not even joking. That's like literally, oh, no, no, no. We weren't soliciting anything. We're just celebrating our industry here. And, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, hey, speaking of the royals, we were before the show because the queen gave her uh, annual speech to parliament today. In a, am told now <laughs> that that is not a gray suit. That is a... What do they say? A lavender gray suit? Uh, it's not some, taupe. It's not taupe. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the royals, Prince Harry's uh, Apple TV Plus mental health docuseries that he's doing with Oprah. Oh, oh, really? Harry and Oprah are working together. What a shock. Uh, to premiere on May 21st. It's called The Me You Can't See. Executive produced by uh, Oprah and Prince Harry. And I see uh, like, some I other famous saw it, people. But they had a this. joke. Gaga and they had a joke close. headline with Gwyneth Paltrow saying that, oh, oh, my God, during the quarantine, I had to eat bread and drink wine. Oh, <laughs> and, shocking. And people at first were, but it, it was meant to incense. And this is the same thing is like, isn't it meant to incense people? Because like you're like yeah. a prince and you're not seen. And, uh, you know. Yeah, this is this isn't I, this isn't like when they signed uh, the Obamas to be producers because they have had they have led extremely meaningful lives that have and a breadth of experience that. They, I think, they need to share with the rest of the world. I'm not saying that the that the they're not the royals are not good people. I'm just saying that what what about their experience suggests that they are have a they have an insight or a point of view that's going to be good for a mass audience. It's. I apologize. I've just been handed this note from the producers. It was lilac gray. Thank you very much. <laughs> lilac. Lilac gray. Can I can I just kind of say that you, you read this disclaimer. <laughs> Listeners, listeners of the UK, you, you got your issues with the Royals. Do do whatever you have to do, but find a way to hold on to Black Rod. That is my favorite part <laughs> of like British tradition that you have that, that his or her, in this case, her title is Black Rod because she carries a Black Rod that she pounds on the door. It's a good title of the such later she, demanding to be let she's in. She's the Black Rod, not any old Black Rod. The Black Rod. Yes. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you, Web uh, three six zero four. It, it's lilac gray. I want to make sure we corrected that, the record. Uh, this is part of Apple's multi-year deal with uh, Oprah. Uh, it's unclear, according to 9 to 5 Mac, if Prince Harry's personal mental health struggles will be part of the show. In The Me yeah. You Can't See, Oprah and Prince Harry guide honest discussions about mental health and emotional well-being. I mean, clearly this does you know, need to be discussed without stigma in an open way. And I guess if you want to destigmatize something, you have famous people, uh, celebrities and others say, yeah, I'm suffering from this uh, too. You know, that that's true. I, 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 I 
wish to partially retract what I said. I didn't know it's especially when somebody of that kind of a high profile uh, makes that kind of a that kind of a I don't take a, it as yeah, admission. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, no, I just I just realized that, yeah, that, that would be a very, very powerful thing. Well, but it's also I mean, I you know. Oh, Glenn Close and Lady Gaga having emotional problems. Oh, I'm so sorry. Prince Harry, so sorry. It, you know, but but at the same time, I think for people who are, you know, uh, going through things, it's maybe it's it's helpful to see somebody you who you're we familiar with. We talk with. we talk openly about things that we as a society consider to be normal. If there's That's something right. we're not talking over That's openly right. about, right. society saying that this is not normal. That's right. So this is why we need openness. Uh, I'm actually curious to see what Oprah's show with Jon Stewart is going to be like she's that's coming yeah. later this year that should be very interesting a current I'm, glad, I'm so glad i'm so glad to see him come back because yes. I, i've i've i'll, I'll admit that him. i don't i've never I, I was he's never been my cup of tea as a comedian i've i've when he was doing the daily show even i'm like please just don't let other people try to be funny every time you try to be funny i just have to mute for a couple of minutes and walk around the room a bit but as a managing editor he has some extremely gifted talent yes. there yes and i'm i'm glad to see that and, and and he's been sharing that talent and inspiring other people to create shows that are in that kind of vein so really if all if the, all the announcement was that he's going to be editorial director of a new uh, news entertainment division, uh, you know what? That might even get me to subscribe to a channel uh, otherwise because he is such a profound talent in that regard. Uh, when's Ted Lasso coming back, more importantly? <laughs> soon. It's really soon, isn't it? Uh, I hope so. Are they? So they're yeah, actually filming. They, they had the trailer yeah. at the last event. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And the, uh, and the shortbread recipe, yes. Yes. Well, there is a rumor. Take it as you will. I mean, I think we're, you know, we're only about uh, three weeks away from an Apple event that will announce some stuff. I'm excited. I'm hoping we're yeah. going to see uh, new MacBooks. There is a rumor that Apple will introduce the new MacBook in IMAX style colors. That would kind of make sense. The iBook. I love <laughs> I love, love, love this rumor. It was because the, the, there's been such a small, it's, uh, as much as such a small perceptual difference between the Air and the Pro, partly because if they've kind of kneecapped the, the the Pro, but to make the Air the fun computer that costs as little as you can possibly spend for a mobile Mac. And if you want a pink one, we'll give you a pink one. You want a green one or a purple one, we'll sell you a green one or a purple one. You don't have to, <laughs> we're no longer offering you the dazzling array of gray or a slightly yeah. different shade of gray. <laughs> Gray or silvery gray. I love, you know, I like the orange is beautiful and so forth. And the yeah. two-tone, I hope they don't do white bezels, but uh, I bet they do if they you know do. they will. Yeah. Uh -huh. the, the picture, well, the one that Prosser said he saw, well, had white keys and white bezels. Yeah. It's pretty. You know, I'm looking, this is a render from a fan, not a not an actual yeah. picture, but it's pretty. I would, I would, you know, that's pretty. I wouldn't be even pleased to see it. The lose design is that, different too. Uh, the wedge design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prosser yeah. Uh, said Apple has been testing prototypes, which one would expect, in more colors, including a blue blue one. Prosser's source suggests Apple will bring in colors for average consumers. So you keep the slate gray for pros, and right. uh, yeah. yes, because we're boring. Because we're so boring. Yeah, I would and like. The, the the, I would like to buy flies. a pro in uh, color. Please. Yeah, I, I would have, I, you know, I, I didn't want to have a gray iPad Pro. I, I would have, if yeah. there had been a purple one, I would have bought Absolutely. the hell out of a purple one. And look how Same. well the various colors sell. You know, the, yeah. people love it. It's also, no, it's also when you enough. take a look at, yeah, I mean, we, we, when you look at what they're compared to every other computer that you see, like at the Starbucks or the coffee shop, every single one of them is like as boring. The, the MacBooks and MacBook Air, they're as boring as every other every computer out there. Used to be that we were, <laughs> used to remember the, the, the original iBook, like, let's take a toilet seat lid and try to base a whole computer design philosophy around that. <laughs> and I'll be I'll be damned. Handle. It was it was cool. It worked. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that's well, that's that. you, you. You changed, man. You used to be you used to be fun. <laughs> what happened, man? Here's an interesting uh, YouTube from a guy who's taken the air tag, stripped off the unnecessary stuff, <laughs> and made it walletable. Uh, it's funny how people are really tearing these apart and breaking them down. And iFix has done that, and so he's going to make yep. a just get the guts of the air tag so that you can put it in your wallet. This is uh, Andrew uh, uh, Guy. I don't know how you say his name. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Or what? NG in Vietnamese is what? Isn't it? Why? Oh, isn't it? What is it? 
add a new item. I think I thought it was not, but I'm not sure. I don't know. This is cool. So he's got the he's printed he's 3D printed a uh, little holder for the battery. Nice job, Andrew. Yeah. There, look, it popped up. He found it. An air tag. That's that's a good feeling. A cot sized air tag. This is not approved by Apple. So if we take a look at no, that's a, that, that's a but that's a very positive thing because if it's useful so long as it stays with your bag, stays with your wallet. If you if the first thing that a, that's a thief does is like rip this visible Hermes tag off of you, well, okay, well they wouldn't rip it off; they would sell it. But imagine imagine you spent twelve dollars <laughs> on, on a on an Amazon <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, if, if if you make it something that is just slipped into a pocket that they're not going to find it until they've been, been they've been tracked for about a day and a half, that's such a positive thing. And I, I look and this is this is very much in the in the spirit of apple they're not again we're the crazy ones we're the ones who say gee if i could if i take this apart is there a way that i can make this into something even cooler and i'm glad that they i'm glad that didn't apple didn't just like arbitrarily say there must be some way so that we'll, we'll fill we'll fill this chamber with argon gas and if the gas goes away we will disable the entire thing just to be the the company based on no fun uh, a german hacker uh named stack smashing his modified the NFC URL. He says it's a jailbreak for the AirTag. I don't know if that counts as a jailbreak, but he has been able to modify the URL on the uh, NFC tag. Stacksmashing.net. Um, uh, Dust stack smasher. You know, if somebody has your AirTag in their hot little hand, they can do anything they want with it. So if they have physical possession of your AirTag, is it really safe? Yeah, you're out of luck. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, do you, are you ready for a titanium... Uh, Apple Card coming to your family members? <laughs> I don't know. The, no, we, the to Steve to Wozniak editions. The Steve Wozniak edition. The Apple Card you can you slice can meat with. Cut, cut a steak with? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steve carries a metal business card that he says he can get on an airplane so he can cut his steak with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What, uh, why do, why, what happened? What happened to like our, us as a culture? Now we have like billionaires who are like, oh, I, I spent a hundred, I spent a half a billion dollars on a yacht uh, with a, another yacht that goes onto it. That's Jeff Bezos. We used to have cool like, hey, I'm a billionaire. I'm gonna I'm gonna carry around two dollar bills on a on a gummed pad, and I'm gonna put on music festivals because I want to see bands that I want to see. We used to have cool billionaires for God's sake. Uh, anything else? Did I miss anything before we go to our picks of the week? Anything else you want to uh, talk about? <laughs> Mm. Nope. I think I think we got it all. I mean, I've I've skipped a few things, but I don't. You know, I don't. We don't have to be complete. I don't want to exactly. be completist here. For instance, Apple has asked Apple Watch users are doing a survey if they use any third party glucose monitoring. I wouldn't necessarily yeah. assume that that question in a survey means Apple's about to do it. There is always that drumbeat, but uh, but that's a hard thing to do. That's a hard thing to do. Yeah, yeah there, there's there's, there's a company that got a lot. There's a company that's got a lot of press about saying that they have we have a new uh, there's a, a a slide deck that's making the rounds by the company that says that we now have like a visible light spectrum sensor uh, appropriate for use on on watches that can do some sort of glucose monitoring although they are very cagey about is it good enough so that a type 1 diabetic can get alerts about uh, get health alerts or is it just sort of a general guidance hey your blood sugar is higher than it was uh this morning or it's, it's just lower than it was this morning but even so that would be that is one of the holy grails of fitness band fitness watch manufacturers to get some sort of blood glucose monitoring they've they've, they've year after year they keep making more and more breakthroughs blood oxygen saturation level was a big one uh, but now we're getting to the point where uh, Google was even like making getting a lot of hay from a patent. Say, hey, we we're gonna have a contact lens that will that yeah. will give your then blood glucose level because yeah, so, yeah. And so I mean, so long it's like you need to have access to the to the wet parts of the body right. in order to get that kind of reading. The first company that could get and do it in such a way that the FDA would approve it for use Huge. in a uh, big in bucks. a prescriptive for it, that would be yeah. big bucks. Yeah, yeah. That's the I, moonshot land. Everybody's working on it, and I you know still hasn't happened. It's so exciting. It yeah. makes me think it must be uh, hard to do yep. uh, alright let's take a little break and when we come back your picks of the week boy and boy <laughs> our show today, show today brought to you this is the one thing I'm not going to demonstrate but we do have a video so that's close enough by my mattress the Casper mattress you know I have to say I track my sleep and my sleep tracking I just got the new Casper mattress and, and I, my sleep tracking is been like 10 points higher i have to say i think it's the mattress it could be the bedding the pillows 
I we're all Casper in the house. I love Casper. The the new Casper cooling collection. This is perfect for summertime. Well, anytime. We know that you sleep better when you're slightly cool. The Casper Cooling Collection has everything you need to help you sleep cool all the night long. Uh, the new Casper mattresses, what they call it, the snow technology. The new hyper light sheets, the lightweight duvets. And of course, let's not forget the breathable mattress protector, all designed to keep you cool and comfortable so you can't but help but love your tomorrow. Tomorrow is a new day. Make the most of it with Casper's new cooling collection. Now, this is not one of them. This is my, my old Casper. We didn't shoot a video when the new mattress came. I just uh, <laughs> I just said, put it on the bed now. I want to take a nap. <laughs> I, we've, we've had all the Casper mattresses. The new Wave Hybrid Snow Mattress keeps you cool for 12-plus hours, pulling heat away from your body for sustained temperature regulation. A cool-to-the-touch feeling and a much-improved tomorrow. I think that mattress is in the guest bedroom. My daughter has a Casper at home. Uh, when she moved to her new apartment, she said, Dad, I don't have a bed, so I bought her everything from Casper. The, 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 the bed frame, foundation, the mattress, pillows, pillowcases, sheets, everything. Uh, Casper's hyper light. I wish that they had come out with these. They had this was just before they came out with them. They're hyper light sheets. This is so cool. I'm ordering some of these. Designed with an innovative grid weave that lets the air flow through. Again, this is about sleeping cool, about being breathable. There's a lightweight duvet that you still get all that plush comfort, but with optimal temperature control. And and let's not forget the mattress protector because that can actually be a, a blanket below you. But with the Casper breathable mattress protector. Your bed is co even cooler by allowing air to flow between your body and your mattress. All designed to work together to prevent overheating all night on these hot summer nights. You're definitely going to want this because cooler sleep means better sleep. And better sleep means better tomorrows, or at least better sleep scores. I, can, I can't, can't promise you a better tomorrow, but a better sleep score. As always, Casper offers free shipping and free return. We love our Casper. You will, too. When it comes to a better night's sleep, Casper's new cooling collection has you covered. Focus on tomorrow. Let Casper handle the rest. Explore Casper products, mattresses, sheets, pillows, and more at casper.com slash MacBreak. Use the code MacBreak for $100 off select mattresses. That's offer code MacBreak, M-A-C-B-R-E-A-K, for $100 off select mattresses. Offer excludes the snow mattresses. See casper.com for more details. A cooler sleep from Casper. Thank you, Casper. I feel very well rested, I must say. I, I don't know if it's the mattress or me, but I leap out of bed. I used to have to, I just leap out of bed. Yeah. I used to roll out of bed. Now I leap. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it takes, it, it's one of those silly things where you have like, geez, why have, I've been sleeping like crap for the past. Yes. I, I, I've been doing, I'm adjusting yes. my, oh, oh, maybe it's the fact that I've been, I, I last replaced my mattress 10 years ago. And then you realize that, oh, that's right. There is that divot. Yeah. <laughs> that tends to roll the me Andy off to the Shapes side of it. divot. Yep. Mm hmm Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know what? Maybe uh, I'll talk to Lisa. We can get you a Casper. I think you'd like I'll, it. Thank you very much. Are you much. sleeping I uh, on a king, a queen, a twin? I'm, I'm sleeping on. I'm sleeping on a full. A yes. full. Okay. Yes. Good. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> we wouldn't want Andy the to be California sleeping. King. <laughs> yeah, the California King. King is. You can get one. We have a regular King, but the California King is weird. It's shorter but wider. I don't know. Is yeah. that what is that about? I don't understand. That oh, about. I like. No, I, I I like that. I keep every time I shop for a new mattress. I always tr think of maybe I should get a King this time. That way I could have like one third of it devoted oh. to like office space. I love yes. for just for <laughs> you can sleep because a family of four in that thing. They're huge. I'm not. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm, I'm not joking because, like, you, okay, the laptop, like, I, 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 I usually like, put it on the nightstand, but often, like, I'll, I'll just like be there when I wake up. There'll be books there. There'll be. Oh yeah. It's like I oh, need. Yeah. I need office. I space always know when I've bed. done that because <laughs> then I'll. And if Lisa goes to bed before I do, they'll it'll all be on the floor, and I know yep. I know what she's done, which is <laughs> kick everything off. <laughs> where are my Where are my books? My laptop? Why is that all? My iPad? Why is it on the floor? Well. <laughs> Think, Leo. Why do you think? Why? How did it get on the floor? Because because the books are comfortable Rapping. on the floor for eight hours a day. You are not. <laughs> Perfect. Andy, how about your pick of the week? I like this one. Actually, you got uh, two. Couple, 
couple of quick ones because I didn't find anything new over the past week that I kind of like enough to recommend. Uh, but Studio Neat Canopy, that's actually recommended this a few weeks ago as a really nice like sort of origami folding case for your uh, Apple Magic Keyboard that transforms into an easel for your iPad. Liked it. I hadn't bought it yet uh, because I, having sunk $1,400 on the iPad Pro, I decided that I'm going, I'm going to fund the extra money for the extra storage by deferring accessories. Uh, I'm glad I did because uh, someone on Twitter was kind of point out that on Amazon Studio Neat has uh, has put them put them half off their $20 uh, and for 20 bucks for heaven's sake even if even if you just want a carrying case for your magic keyboard and you don't care about the easel that is good money spent Studio Neat makes great great stuff uh, and so that's that's a really really great deal I think it's only available through Amazon at that price uh, but if you go look for Studio Neat cam canopy you will see uh, 20 bucks it's sold directly from Studio Neat so you know it's not a knockoff otherwise you'd be well why is this why is AB, ABC Shenzhen Tech Innovation selling this for half the price of, okay, maybe it's because it's a knockoff. I like how uh, great and, your keyboard looks when you close it up. I mean, that's really nice yeah, looking. Yeah, exactly, because unless you get a custom, I, I do travel with a keyboard. I'm going to New York for the, I'm, I'm, I, I'm officially vaccinated, officially uh, uh, okay to travel. So on Thursday, I'm making a day trip to New York, and as usual, I'm taking a keyboard with me, and you can never find a case that is specifically for that keyboard, and so it, it's like putting it into like a big, big sock that you want something that's custom made for it so i'm very very pleased uh, to, to to have this and try it out and um the other th go ahead i should just point out that it doesn't say which ipad it's for that's because it's, it works with all of them even a phone it right. it's just an easel it's just, just a stand hand. yeah if you want to if you want to use it with a samsung tablet a right. hp <laughs> hp tablet they, they they just want their money they don't they don't morally judge but you do um, need the, the uh rechargeable magic keyboard that's what it's. It, it will only fit with a magical key, right. magic keyboard. Don't know if it'll fit with anything else. It's not. It's, it doesn't. It doesn't have like you know uh, uh, security codes. To double check. It's, it's not like how <laughs> Hewlett Packard making a printer cartridge. But right. I think that if you want something that perfectly is designed to fit your magic keyboard, this is probably going to be the way to go. Very nice. Um, the other pick is a long, long time pick. Uh, Pocket Casts, which is my favorite, favorite uh, podcaster everywhere. Every time, which is not to say there aren't good ones. Not to say that Apple and Google don't make good ones. Not to say that Downcast isn't a good one. Etc. Uh, but I always come right back to Pocket Cast because, uh, and to, I, I uh, uh, the one of the developers, uh, Russell Ivanovic, is as a friend of mine. We used to do a podcast together, and I was talking to him just last night about this. I said, "This is it is the cast iron skillet of its category." Where again, there's the sous vide machine, and then there's the instant pot, and then there's the special toaster oven that like has a water reservoir so it'll steam as it toasts. But you always keep coming back to that cast iron skillet that you've been using for twelve years that you're your mom used for 20 years before that and that your grandmother used for 30 years before that because it is perfectly tuned for the job it's supposed to do, which is help you find new podcasts, arrange the podcast that you've been listening to, and also sort of be a, a, a central place uh, for uh, for spoken audio listening. Uh, and it's, it's absolutely free because uh, they they were uh, uh, bought out and they got into a partnership with uh, PBS and a couple other broadcasters. So the, so the app itself is free uh, for $10 they got, a year. So, by the way, they, PBS sold them. Right. So, but so they, I don't but know they who owns them now. <laughs> but it's well, still but, free. But, it's st but the point is, it's still free. And it's not like yeah. a crippled free. They do have Pocket Casts Plus, which I'm more than happy to pay for, 10 bucks a year, even if it were more than that, because I just want... It's one of those, I want to give you money to show you how happy I am about the work that you're doing. But this isn't the sort of... Oh, and if you want to listen to more than three podcasts or more than three hours per week, give us $10 a year. No, these are actually well considered a well-considered suite of uh, bonus features. My favorite one is the ability to uh, not only can you uh, do you have access to a web player so that you can come back from your daily walk I can come back from my daily walk halfway through a podcast and then like go back to my computer open up pocket casts uh, in a web browser and pick up exactly where I left off because they're all synced together but also if I there's a uh, I don't know if you are familiar with Andy Zaltzman uh, he is a funny funny smart comedian who uh, does uh, who's been doing like news based comedy he was originally the comedy partner of uh, John Oliver before oh, and yeah. During the time yeah, yeah. he moved uh, moved to the UK, I listened to the, the Daily uh, Show because of you. I listened to the Bugle, uh, the Bugle, right, all the time. Uh, and now, I love that show. Yeah. And uh, he, he was uh, recently named as the permanent new host of uh, the News Quiz on the BBC on BBC oh. Radio. 
if if that show is available via podcast, I can't find it. Uh, and it's no, nowhere on the site. But what I can do is I can download the audio from the uh, BBC site. And then if I just simply drag that into the Pocket Cast window, now that will be available to me through all the devices that I've got Pocket Casts installed on, whether it's Android, whether it's uh, See, uh, iOS. See, that's a nice feature. Desktop. I like that. Yeah, because yeah. there's so much audio. Like, uh, And we, does it we, pick we, up where you left off? Does it treat it like a podcast? It does. Exactly. Okay. And I, I, I use that a lot. We've been talking a lot about how, like, when you, my, one of the banes of my existence is, like, Senate testimony. And I feel as if I have time to listen to, like, four hours of, te of testimony, I will do so. And, but like, oh, God, I'm, 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 it's the only thing. Oh, th uh, I may as well take a three hour walk because I'm going to be, I'm going to be in miserable pain anyway. So I may as well listen to this, this three, three hours of testimony, even uh, at uh, one and a half times spoken up. And I can just simply drag. It, just drag it into that web window, and when I go to my phone, it will be there available for download, just as another podcast. It's just, it's just, and that's just one of a few different features that are available for ten, measly ten bucks a year. Again, the the this is somebody who you can always you can always tell this uh, someone who who uh, a team that wrote an app for their own use, and every time they got frustrated with something, they fixed it or they added a feature because it just keeps getting better and better and better. Like I said, it's the cast iron skillet of podcasting apps. I guess podcasting BBC's apps. attitude on the news quiz is you. Should should be using our app because you can listen to it in the BBC Sounds app. Yeah. So they make it available for download. And by the way, Andy, for this week's news quiz, just remember, lilac gray. Lilac, lilac gray. gray. I'm, I, I'm more interested in the in the discussion about what brooch she was brooch she was uh, she was wearing because she she always chooses like you find oh well, actually that's a very pretty brooch and I bet it's like 300 years old and it's worth 18 million dollars like yes also because she was giving uh, giving a uh, a welcome a, a thank you address to uh, to service people that this is actually something that was that was given to her uh, like on her first fifth anniversary oh. of joining the women's corps and that oh okay there's always a it's it, it is it is like Leonard Malton and is like movie collectible like lapel pins like oh so he's got a Je Jennifer Rab Jessica, Jessica Rabbit pin on because she's talking about Disney I don't think she'll be wearing a Jessica Rabbit pin but uh, you never know look at this if Queen, look if at Queen this. Victoria wore here one comes the guy, here yeah. comes the black stick get ready is that black him in rod. the back black rod that guy Her. in the back with the black rod yeah Nope, nope, nope. She's got she's got leg leggings on. She she has some. She oh. ha, she is she's being she has. Who's to be holding sent the Santa's the hat? Is that somebody else? Is that another person? <laughs> that is that is the that is the crown of the official crown of state. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. That was Prince Charles uh, helping her up the stairs there. Oh wow! Uh, as she will she. She will nod to the person to uh, her left that tells, and she, he tells Black Rod, "Okay, time to go get the the plebes. Wow, <laughs> the elected plebes. Is this the House in. of Lords, obviously. That's the House of Lords, yeah. right? Uh, with social distancing, of course. So it's not many lords. Yeah, just a all, few all, lords. all the people in their their, their Santa suits. It's amazing. <laughs> this is this is why you have royalty is for stuff like this. It's just all again Black Rod. If, if there were if, if there were a Black Rod action figure, I'm buying the Black Rod. Action is she going to come in the Black Rod any minute now, or? No, no. She, she again. She sent. She sent out to, to go across the hall to the House of Commons. As soon as she approaches the door, it's slammed in her face to, to as traditionally to show that hey, look, you don't have. There you go. See, there's someone already there waiting to. They're going to close the, the door, door her on her. Yes, because there she, she has, is. She, there she is. She there. doesn't. She doesn't have the freedom of the House of uh, the House of Commons. She has to ask for permission. So they have to and act course, out this whole stupid thing. Yes, because it's uh, as it was about when uh, it co comes from history oh, when the door is closed. Yeah. Wait a minute, I got to so turn on the sound. Is she going to beg? No, she's going to pound on the door with the. Oh black yeah, staff. she's pounding with a black, black rod. rod. Yeah, there, that, there's actually damage on the door. There's black damage. Rod! Yep. Here comes the black rod. Yep. Wow. She used to be in charge. She used to run Wimbledon. I wouldn't mess with her. She could looks dangerous no, she, with that rod. There. Especially especially with that kid. I, I would also cosplay as that. That would I would get respect. It's funny that they go through this pantomime, but they still have tape tape on the floor to yep. show you where to walk. Yeah. But the but the fun part about this was that this dates back to when like the the, the king would go would basically go into the House of Commons to basically arrest and have these people imp imprisoned. So that's why they slammed the door in their face because look, you we can we can barricade the door if we want to. Oh, and then here comes the the mace of power. Wow, look at that thing. Oh my God. The one that you get severely scolded if you decide to pick it up. If as I a, had that in Valheim, I think I'd be invincible. I need that. Okay, but so they, that's these, a rechargeable or is that like eight <laughs> cells? It's in a loot box. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there, there's Boris Johnson, recognizable from his hair. 
so this is uh, this is the few commoners that are going to get to go right. Just this uh, yep. the the socially distanced House of Commons. Wow, what this is kind of fun to watch. The speech itself like not that exciting, but uh, but still, yeah. yeah fun yeah, when, when you're a thousand years old, you get to you get a bunch of traditions that you're like, okay. When I was 18, I thought this was lame, but now that I'm 40, it's like you appreciate kind of cool it, don't you? You appreciate a little bit I, more. That's like I wish I wish I could be Black Rod just for a day. Like there's a charity oh, option. Yeah, I'd love that job. <laughs> you spend 70 years getting to be the third person in line for a second. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it looks like it's frozen. No, they're they're just not moving. <laughs> They're <laughs> just sitting there in silence listening. Uh, all right, Mr. Rene Ritchie, it's time for your pick of the week. So I, I have two as well, just just so that Andy is not it's good. We don't Andy's have Alex alone here, so in his duality. Yeah, fill it up. So the first one is OmniFocus Four. They've announced it and they're opening it oh, up for wow. testing. There's a waiting list for a test uh, flight for it, and so uh, typically excellent uh, Omni Group. Uh, blog post that just tells you about what their goals and their designs and their their thinking is towards OmniFocus 4. And there's links there for you to go to and sign up for their test flight waiting list if you want to be part of the the feedback loop for OmniFocus 4, which I'm sure getting things done nerds all over the planet are already eagerly aligning so for. So do you, much do you like use OmniFocus? I mean, I love the Omni group and I love their stuff. I just feel like this this particular program is kind of overkill for me. You know, I don't. I so I I, I look at uh, like message management apps like gym memberships, like they're the gym memberships of the app stores. Yeah. Like there's always another one <laughs> you can get, but the act of getting it makes you feel better about yourself. It's right. not the act of using it. It's yeah. just like I got a gym membership, my life is better. I downloaded a management app, my life is better, um, and then it's just one more thing to manage. But uh, my ideal, I've told them this before, like my ideal would be not things but thing, where you can only put yeah. one thing in it, and you can't put anything else in. I think there or is like a version a of OmniFocus, yeah, where machine learning. Learning removes the stuff that it knows that it knows I'm not going to do, so I don't have to feel guilty about it. <laughs> like I wake up and it's just machine learned no, away everything it knows you, I'm going to procrastinate to about. That. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah. they they have yeah. yeah I still have to do that manually like a loser. Yeah, it uses it uses the formal getting things done methodology, which is actually yeah. an actual thing. GT. So if you understand it and if you, it really is about getting your mindset tuned into that thing, kind of like Pomodoro. There, there are all kinds of people who have different systems right. that are been published that have been uh, that have been seminared out the wazoo uh, and yeah i've i've seen people who use omnifocus like Martina Navratilova like uses, a, <laughs> uses a uses a, a tennis racket, uh, and th and it's really really quite impressive. Also, uh, it's not. I agree, it's not for me. It's too complicated for what I need to do. But it's as usual. Anything with uh, anything with the uh, with the Omni label on it, they are true artisans. They are they are yes. they are emblematic of the difference between like Mac and iOS development and Windows and Android development. Which is again, Windows apps are great. Uh, Android apps are great, but you just don't see it's rare that you see the kind of virtuosity that omni puts into just about every single app that they make it's amazing yeah. uh and by the oh, way we'll from continue. we'll get to your second pick in just a second but from cramped sure. in our chat room andy there is a friday night comedy podcast from bbc radio 4 that includes the news quiz i didn't i did not know that okay yes. are you happy I, I think i think i'm actually subscribed to it i just don't listen to it every single week <laughs> oh okay <laughs> Well, there you go. Uh, why? But what? Why, why not? I know. I, I'm, I glad, know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that Andy Zaltzman's very happy that they prevented me from being simply doing a keyword search on the site and finding it. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> strange. But thank you, Cramped. We appreciate it. And now, yes, thank you. Your second pick, Renee. Yeah. So it's a it's a YouTube channel called DSL Shooter, and it's Caleb Pike's channel, and he has just been ingenious over the last year, showing different setups that if you just if you want to improve your Zoom or your FaceTime well, that's or your WebEx or whatever, Look or you want to be a streamer or you want to go and make YouTube videos, he's got a bunch of these like complete video setups on a desk, complete video setups on a pole. He, the one today is complete video setup in a briefcase, like or like a sorry a Pelican case. So he drives it as cheap as he can. He gives you options for lower price stuff for higher price stuff. Um, but it's really designed for you to get high quality video streams at a really, really low nice. price. Um, nice. And he's, he's just ingenious about how he builds all this stuff. Tip number one, just from my own experience, do not buy a 55 inch computer monitor because there's no <laughs> way you can have a camera. You know, when I'm doing my, uh, my Valheim thing, I realize I can't put a kit because if I put it on top of the monitor, I'll be <laughs> looking up like that. Yes. So I have it on the side, which is not really good Twitch practice, I guess. But uh, 
I put the chat room underneath it, so when I'm looking at the chat room, I can look at the camera. Uh, I need to get an arm for and, my uh, mic, though. That's a that's a good idea. Yeah, he's using two of those uh, of those friction arms uh, to mount with the setup, and yeah, it's really good. It looks good. Uh, this looks good. So there's just tons of videos there. If you want one on a stick, that's fine. Like a, like a single C stand, he's got that set up too. But anything, yeah. a lot of times people say they don't have the space, they don't have the room, or they need to move it around. And he's really good at showing you how to set things up so you can do exactly what you need. Uh, I should probably mention that I was on office hours uh, yes. last Thursday. And, I watched uh, it. It was great. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we talked about our new club twit with Alex Lindsay. So that is now up on uh, YouTube. Uh, it is the May 6th, but I think it even says focus on Leo Laporte on Club Twit. So you can probably <laughs> find that fairly. Uh, and Andy and I finally learned your secrets to how you stop us from monologuing. It was ingenious. Oh, did I reveal? <laughs> did I reveal that? Oh, that's okay. This, this is this is a, always a, a game of measure and countermeasure, just like sub warfare. <laughs> we'll, we'll work around it. <laughs> uh, repeat the uh, video desk setup. Uh, it's DSLR Video Shooter. Is that the name of the channel? Yes. DSLR. Yeah, that's the name of the channel. It's Caleb Pike is Caleb the, Pike. the host. Yeah. Yeah. I might want to I might want to get a special. I'm, you know, now that I'm streaming on Twitch, I'm really starting to think I should really do something like this, get something fancy and really uh well, they want me to like really they want me to like I have an A10 Mini. Mini. They want me to have a, a behind the head uh wide angle with my GoPro so that you could you know I can I can switch back and forth so you can get it behind and see me in in front of the screen and then go nah, 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 nah. Well, if you have the ATA Mini, Leo, you need not just an overhead, but you need an over-the-shoulder shot with a TV set behind you that shows sponsor messages. Oh, that you can switch to during like the least, yeah. the last, the least. I have no sponsors. It's a club twit, and it's ad-free. Oops, I just deleted my. That's pick. a sponsor message right there. Club twit. <laughs> club twit. Brought to you by. <laughs> brought club to you twit. by club twit members and members like you. Uh, if you are not yet a member of club twit, that would be a good pick of the week. Go to YouTube twit.tv yeah. slash club twit. Uh, the, the, we thought the premise would simply be, uh, you know, since ads are getting harder to sell and people don't like to be tracked, what if we offered an ad free listener supported version of all our shows? So that is the, the come on, uh, all of our shows minus the ads, video and audio for every show, including this one, uh, seven bucks a month. But it turns out the discord has become really a wonderful place to hang out. We do shows in there. We stream live. We have uh, you know, discussions on all kinds of topics. And it's a really nice bunch of uh, people, about 2,000 in the uh, Discord, I think, uh, talking about everything from philosophy to photography to space to travel, which really probably should be the same category. Um, and we have a little trivia room. We have a Let's Play. And it's in the Let's Play that I will play the Valheim uh, as well. So uh, that's fun. And then there's a final piece to the uh, Club Twit, which is a uh, Twit Plus feed... And we put various things like our Untitled Linux show in uh, in that Twit Plus feed, and that's uh, for members of the club. So, seven bucks a month. Find out more at twit.tv slash club twit. There's my plug for club twit. I wanted to show you, and I've unfortunately closed history. There's a thing called history in your browser that shows you... <laughs> that's not my pick. Uh... <laughs> but I and I don't. What if it was? What if it were? I know, I know. What is what is the history? You know, I'm looking here. I don't see uh, uh, library preferences. Oh, I know where it is. It's in that special. Uh, there it is, history. And I'm going to click today. Oh my God, I've been. This is the problem. I look at so many things. Here is here is what I wanted to. Nope, that's not it. That's me buying Andy's pick of the week. Okay, <laughs> there it is, El Lago. So this was something that Philip Elmer DeWitt recommended as a fix yeah. to the crappy uh, remote control for Apple TV. And I got one for every Apple TV in the house. And he's absolutely right. Alago, which makes those great little rubber Macs that you put your Apple Watch in to charge them, also makes an IntelliCase, the Alago R1, for 8 bucks, designed for the Apple TV. This is for the fourth generation Apple TV, the one with Siri. It's got a little magnet on it. I just love this. I have to just want to give it another plug. Philip mentioned it comes in colors. You can get pink if you really want to. Uh, it makes it a lot harder to lose the Apple TV because it also has a, it comes with a, a lanyard, <laughs> a wrist strap. So if you don't have any, uh, you know, you can't throw the t Apple TV away. It's great. I really love this. And as much we have, as you want to. As much as you might want to. I have not had to search for my Apple TV 
in some time. Did you also buy five of the new controllers, Leo? Because that would be the Pro Leo move. I, buy this I like the, the new one. controller, I have to say, but I have not purchased any yet. In fact, okay. I thought I would buy, I thought it would be run, not walk, to buy the Apple TV. And I just don't, I can't think of any reason to buy it, to be honest with you. You can just buy the controller. Yeah, the, the remote is the best reason, I guess. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, that is uh, Mac Break Weekly for this fine Tuesday. We missed you, Alex Lindsay. He's going to be off again. I th uh, No, is he back next week? He's back next week. So uh, he will be back. Um, but uh, thank you for uh, filling in for him, in effect, by talking more. Wasn't too hard, was it? Andy Anako from WGBH <laughs> Boston. We managed to fill the whole show. Uh, he is uh, going to uh -oh. be on Thursday. When are you on next? Uh, Friday at 1 p.m. Let's go to WGBHnews.org to, li to listen live or later. Oh, good. We, we might be getting back into the Boston Public Library studio soon. Oh, uh, wouldn't that, that be nice? I'll, I'll be fully vaccinated. Most of the people, most of the staff are fully vaccinated. I cannot wait for that. So we discussed that at our uh, editorial meeting today. And uh, we're, we're going to see if we can do a live twit in the next uh, week or so. Because I'm, I'm two weeks after my last vaccine. John's fully vaccinated. Uh, I think Mike Elgin is. We're thinking maybe we can get a live Twitten studio. It's been so long. Um, it would be so nice to see people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? It'd be fun. Renee Ritchie, thank you for being here. Renee's channel on YouTube is easy to find. YouTube.com slash Renee Ritchie. What are you talking about this uh, today? Uh, today I'm talking about whether you should get an M1 iMac or wait for the supposed theoretical hypothetical M1X iMac Pro. Oh, that's, that's a really good today. topic. Wow, I don't know. That's a good one. Well, I'm going to have to watch. Wait or or buy. These new ones are very pretty. I love the rumor. Well, we're going to find out June, June 7th, right? We're going to do a live stream. Of the Apple yep, WWDC we'll keynote, and I have I'm a hoping. feeling that's what I just we'll want that 16-inch MacBook Pro, Leo. I'm, that's all I want. <laughs> I think that's the one I'm going to get. I do. I yeah. really, I'm very happy with the PowerBook that I had, 13-inch M1 PowerBook, but I just a little more, a little more RAM, a little more. This, yeah. th I mean, MacBook Pro. What I call it, a PowerBook? PowerBook. I don't. I, I do it all the time myself. It's such a. It's a snappy name. Yeah. It's snappy name. MacBook Pro. Not so easy to say. I'm, I'm, I've just stopped calling the Apple Watch the iWatch. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Renee Ritchie, Andy Anako. So great to see you. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Alex will be back next week. I'm Leo Laporte. We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. You can watch us do it live at twit.tv slash live. Or if you're in Club Twit, go into the uh, Discord. We stream live audio there. And you actually ask people, do you have any, anybody wants to add something, but nobody raised their hand. So uh, maybe next time we'll have some commenters from our Discord. You can also get on-demand versions of all of our shows at twit.tv at our website. Uh, those are the ones with the ads. If you are a club member, of course, you know where to go to get your special versions of the feeds without ads. Uh, On-demand versions, uh, not only on the website, but also there's a YouTube channel dedicated. Uh, you just go to uh, twit.tv slash mbw, click the YouTube link, uh, or get your favorite podcast player like Pocket Casts and subscribe. That way you'll get it automatically every Tuesday afternoon. And if there's a chance uh, on that podcast player to leave a review, as there is on Apple's music and on a Google podcast, please do give us five stars. We'd appreciate that. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Now back to work because break time is over. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you are interested in checking out all things smart home and Internet of Things, then you should check out Smart Tech Today, the podcast I, Micah Sargent, do with my co-host Matthew Casanelli. It's all about the smart home and improving your automations.